going from windows to trees to the Oakley Lodge. Okay. Uh, so um, we've got. Uh, it looks like uh, full house back, and uh, I don't think we need because the. The plans haven't changed. As I read this package, nothing's changed from the last presentation. So all I'm going to ask for uh, is for an update from the last meeting to today, because you did hold a neighborhood meeting, which members of council did not attend. And I would like a bit of an update on that if we could. Um, is that fair enough? I myself from the discussion for reasons previously stated. Okay, thanks very much. Is that what you plan to do? Uh, with one addition, which I, I can present right now. Okay, well, what's the addition? Uh, well, in, in order to address any new material that's been submitted, there was also a traffic study. Yes. And a, an assessment that was done. Correct. In addition to got. public consultation. Yep. And to introduce that we do have uh, representatives from VHA with us, CRD, CRHD, as well as the chair of the board of the CRHD, okay. are available for questions. But I'll turn it over to Howard to recap the public consultation. Okay. <clears throat> Mayor and Councillors, we, we appreciate that this has been a process that has allowed us to, to consult with the neighbours and meet with the neighbours and that's what mm -hmm. we were directed and asked to do in this last meeting. And I'm just going to start by by providing you a summary which we have not done to this point in time in terms of what we view as the public benefits to proceeding with the, sorry, the public benefits to proceeding with with the request that we've made for the very various variances. In respect to the first point, retaining the only publicly funded residential care beds in Oak Bay, we feel it's important that that the care beds remain in Oak Bay, and that is why we have uh, responded to the RFP that we did, in including them as being part of the site of the Oak Bay Lodge. We do believe that this does provide a public benefit by retaining employment opportunities within Oak Bay, and that goes without saying in terms of similar comment to the first. The third one is, which is, is unique in terms of retaining the land in public ownership, we think is a huge public benefit that has resulted through this process that we've entertained, where at the onset, the RFP actually called for providers to make a bid to actually purchase the property, and that was open to both nonprofits and to private operators to make that bid. The next point is dealing with retaining potential adult day services in Oak Bay. We feel that that is a, a very desirable thing which we have uh, allowed to be capable in terms of the building and uh, Howard Waldner has spoken to it in terms of the, the aspect of continuation of dollars supporting the services and the desire if, if possible to actually have it retained in that site. So we think that has potential benefit. The retaining of the natural topography, and we think, is important, and it does not destroy the knoll and the outlook portion of the property in terms of the design and what we have configured here, and we think that's important to retain. We think it's important to retain the mature landscape screening around the property, and uh, we think that this, this plan does achieve that. We have increased setbacks and that's been done through a series of meetings and that, that's actually been increased uh, from meeting to meeting in terms of trying to respond in terms of the distances to the direct neighbors. We do, uh, again, respect and appreciate the input from the neighbors and uh, feel that we have been able to achieve uh, uh, removing the need for on-street parking and that that would be a benefit to the community. We believe that removing the second entrance on Cranmore would be a, a clear benefit in terms of uh, improving the safety for children as well as uh, controlling the traffic on Cranmore. We think there's a unique public nonprofit partnership that this brings to the table, uh, being having chosen uh, as the successful, successful proponent for the RFP, which otherwise might have been different in terms of if it was done from a private perspective, where there would have been a change in land ownership and there would have been a change in terms of uh, a return of investment that the private operator would have expected to receive and uh, that would have been a cost factor in respect to it whereas as a nonprofit it's a totally different structure in terms of how it is operated and what happens to those funds which they stay within the, the public facility. 
There's unique opportunities for funding and financing this deal in terms of that we have been able to uniquely find financing that would, would tie the financing up for 25 years and set the interest rate for that 25 years. And that has allowed us to do something unconventional, uh, which even uh, banks cannot do. They cannot lend beyond 10 years. And if we did a conventional with a bank, you would have to get CMHC insurance. And that would add a million dollars of cost. And I'm saying a million in terms of the collective proposal of both the Mount View as well as the Oak Bay site. All of which combined to provide a state-of-the-art care environment for Oak Bay in terms of the residents that live here, have opportunity to be able to stay here and, and to stay in a familiar setting. And we think that that provides public benefit in terms of that it will now be state-of-the-art in terms of the neighborhood concept as opposed to the current obsolete in terms of where it's nurses station and long corridors and hallways. So we think all these public benefits should be weighed carefully in terms of the deliberation and the de decision-making. We then um, went on to take into consideration a uh, suggestion of where we actually look the property over carefully and walk over it, take photos, and Patrick's going to lead in terms of showing you some slides in terms of from a photo perspective what, what it looks like. Okay, so are you going to comment on the public engagement? Or is, is, is someone going to do that? I can do we so. Do have, we do have your comments, so yeah. just highlight them. I don't need to spend a lot of time on okay. it. Um, we did meet with the, the neighbors, direct neighbors, last uh, Tuesday. I believe there was approximately 25 neighbors in attendance at that meeting, and uh, I was accompanied by Howard Waldner from BHA in respect to that. We did go through a number of uh, questions and uh, discussion items, and they were kind of predetermined between myself and one of the direct neighbors so that we could make sure we tried to stay on track in terms of that. So the first one was we talked about the process part of it in terms of this being a variance versus uh, uh, a, a rezoning. We also talked in terms of the process of the RFP portion of it, where it's an RFP and, and there is certain elements in the RFP process that, that remain confidential or private until you get to a point of where you can share things publicly. And so walking through that process, we tried to explain the process as to how we got to where we were and why the process was what it was. In terms of the 320 beds, we went through the exercise of articulating clearly in terms of how did we come up with 320 beds and explaining how that Sandage had previously gone ahead and uh, rezoned the property to the seven stories and the 260 beds and that that is all that they have rezoned for residential care at this point in time and there's not a contemplation of doing anything further at this point on the Sandage property. So I wanted to clarify that for the neighbors. And then in terms of that, the RFP was actually our RFP, it wasn't VIHA's in terms of how we came up with the numbers. VIA had indicated in the RFP that they needed to have 320 beds replaced, as well as they would like to have an additional 100 beds if possible, based on what their affordability was in terms of what the proposals were. And so when you look at the combined totals, we came in with uh, 580 beds, which is 30 beds more than the total replacement of the Old Bay Lodge, Mount Tomey, and our two existing facilities that we were working on replacing with the Capital Regional District up at Mount View, a central care home, and Mount Edwards Court care home. So that is how the numbers were arrived at in terms of why the proposal and why the need to look at six stories and 320 beds in Old Bay. We then uh, talked about building composition, um, about the building configuration, the size, the mix, the ratio, direct care levels, and responded to that. We also shared with them, um, just looking ahead to make sure I don't miss something. Uh, I'm not sure if it was at this point or not. We shared with them the different models that we looked at in terms of how the beds could be configured and laid out on the property and that this was the only model that would work. Even if you took the knoll totally down and worked with a flat piece of property, you couldn't get it down in terms of height. And uh, we also acknowledged that there were trade-offs in terms of uh, height versus uh, size of neighborhoods and that uh, evidence-based research has, has 
driven this in part as well as the economics have driven it to come up with neighborhoods of 20. Um, the next topic was the needs that BS speak to, spoke to in terms of the regional needs versus the, the need for care and uh, the importance of that and also from a perspective of the Capital Regional District in South Island. Um, there was discussion in terms of who the beds were for and the accessibility and how that works in terms of uh, uh, someone making a first request of location and how that worked. Um, we did talk about building height and there were some questions in respect to building height and just to articulate to articulate that the building height that we're suggesting is 17.9 feet higher than the existing building with the latest proposal that we've made, which is approximately two stories. Um, we did speak in terms of there was concern from our perspective in terms of it was raised that that urgency was a concern in terms of being able to put this package which is very complex together and to being able to keep the timelines and be able to ensure that we don't lose financing opportunities. Um, there was questions asked very directly in terms of consequences of denial of variances and what that would mean and Howard Waldner spoke to that and he may speak again to that if you so desire. Um, we, we did, uh, I see here's where we talked about alternative designs. We then introduced the parking and traffic study, which we had the draft of at that point in time, and uh, walked through some of that information. And the, the conclusion of the parking and traffic study concluded that they did not see this putting a burden upon the neighborhood in terms of either issue of traffic or parking. And that certainly the, uh, the increased capacity of 320 beds was not creating an issue in terms of what we were proposing with the 30 per, uh, one to three ratio for the parking. And so with that, that's how we concluded, but we concluded the evening as well that we appreciated very much the input from neighbors and the process of where we were able to, to dialogue with neighbors. And we would certainly, upon a favorable decision of council to move forward in two weeks time, uh, we would want to continue a consultative process with the neighbors in, in all matters of the building. And that would include things such as uh, dealing with landscape issues and uh, relative issues in terms of their property to, to this piece of property and how one might use screening or other means in terms of uh, what the desirability of that neighbor was in terms of how we might tr treat the landscaping, as well as entertaining and being involved in terms of the exterior finishes and design of the building, that we could have those kind of dialogues as well. So we see the dialogue uh, continuing not ending with this process. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Oh, thank you, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Cudd. Um, I'll forego any of the material that I had um, to present tonight, but I, I would just um, remind you that we do have the chair of the, the CRHD board here, and if you're interested, he is prepared to make a short statement. Okay, and uh, we also have Mr. Walner here, and he wanted to make a statement, and you were referred to. Did you want to, Mr. Walner? Okay. Mayor, just a point of information. I I thought we were going to be showing some photographs. Is that what Mr. Mister Thompson said? Okay. Uh, I, 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 Is these new photographs and photographs that were taken from the perspective of the neighbors? Would be, you know, the ones I that did. I suggested that you take photographs and then you slide in <coughs> what, what it would look like. I did take some uh, photographs through the rear yards and along the adjoining property line. If it. I, I would like to see them. I would like okay. to see them, yes. So uh, I have, really that was the extent of the new information. No, that that, that's today. fine. Well, I'm interested in tonight's new information. So. Okay, so I can quickly go through those images and then maybe uh, yep. Graham Hill can yep. conclude. So this is an image looking, um, I'm going to be working from the north end of the block, so 1958 is the house that is to the north of the Heritage House. Yep. And you see down in the, uh, in, the, in the distance there, those are the rear of the houses that face onto Balker. So we're looking here from the adjoining property line between the Heritage House and the property to the north, which is 1958. And we're looking down into their rear yard, into their pool. The uh, Oak Bay Lodge site is to the left. 
Now this is just rotating a little bit to the left. So now we're looking from that vantage point. We're now looking up at where the gazebo is and uh, the existing facility you can see uh, poking out beyond the profile of the, the knoll. And the dotted line in red is the additional 17.9 feet of the proposed building. So do, you can very clearly see the impact of the additional two floors. Uh, but it really will be two stories exposed uh, to that rear yard condition. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Now, the, the building... Mic down. The, uh, where the building is located there, is, is, is the new building as, as change, is it going to be there or farther back? It's actually, uh, in this case, it's about two meters further, further, back. further back, correct. This is a panoramic view standing in the rear yard of the Heritage House. So if you look to the right, you'd be looking down towards the next property. And I've stitched all of these photographs, so if you were to visualize standing in one place and then just turning till you were seeing the other side of the, the rear of the Heritage House, that is the full panorama view of the rear from that rear yard condition. And there's a stone wall, the gazebo, you really can't see the existing building. And we're saying that, uh, that at, in, in, in reality, the existing building at two stories in height probably won't even show this much, but is, is largely still concealed by the knoll with the exception of a floor and a half uh, exposed beyond. Where are you standing taking this picture? This is, this is in the rear yard of the Heritage House. Oh, okay. well, so would you be at the same level as, let's say, their kitchen? So you'd be below their kitchen looking up? You'd, you'd be below their kitchen looking up? Uh, like what you'd be I don't know what the rooms are inside the home. But, but uh, the main floor? The main floor, yes. Is that where you, that's the level yes. you've taken this picture? Yes, that's the ground floor. Okay, thank you. And this is uh, from down uh, below on the uh, Cadbury Bay roadside. You can see looking up the edge of that knoll that, that adjoining property line is pretty well forested and the existing heritage house is actually sitting right in here behind these trees. The property to the north is actually sitting in behind these trees. This is looking at a pathway that runs up between the heritage house, which you see here, and uh, the property to the north. So it's a very steep drop off in grade. And you can see this is the gazebo right in the distance behind the trees. So again, uh, the, the proposed building with its additional story and a half would probably not come any higher than what's indicated by the red line, but filtered through all of that existing mature landscaping that we're proposing to retain. We also then have an additional 40 meters or 120 or 130 feet of additional area that we can landscape and add new planting. So we do have the potential with uh, an appropriate landscape plan to completely screen our building. This is moving um, south along the street. So this is um, a kind of mid-block. And uh, again, looking through the side yard condition, you can see the mature vegetation through the side and rear yards. The existing building is sitting in here. Um, but our uh, proposed building location at this point would be further removed from that and well screened. This is a, a series of images um, from, from 1900, one, one house further south. And again, there is, um, you can see once you get out close to the rear property line, you can catch a glimpse of the existing building. Uh, but in this location, this building then um, would be taken down and our proposed building would be a significant distance uh, removed from this adjoining property line. So one of the benefits of the orientation that we've been showing is uh, the property, line. instead of this building being adjacent and parallel to the property line, it will be set back considerably with, again, many more opportunities to plant and to screen. No red dots? Or can you, or can um, it's, it's very difficult to, to say. It, the existing building, when we do the cutoff angles, is actually lower than the existing parapet here. So it would be behind because of the distance? Because it's further back, it's 17 feet taller, but it's 60 feet further back. So uh, the cutoff angle of sight is, uh, it, it falls within the existing. This, 
think this is, is this the Murner residence, I think? Yes, it is. And I mean, may I make a comment, sir? Well, no, I mean, we'll wait till the uh, presentation is finished, if you wouldn't mind. This is moving down. This is looking up the rear property line, again, just to get a sense of of the change in grade and the planting that's occurring along there. This is looking from Hampshire through the rear yard of the house on the corner of Cranmore and Hampshire. And you can see the existing building falls in the, below that hedge. Where would the new building be? It's, it's again, it's further back in, very deep into the site. So that building is actually being removed in that location. This is, um, Again, looking up Cadbro Bay Road before it crests to the right, just to get a sense of having pulled that building tight to the street where it would sit. This is the existing building here, so the additional 17 feet, and then pulling it onto Cadbro Bay Road. This is a panorama view of Cadbro Bay Road as well, so the one wing of the building that would be parallel to that would be here. This is the entrance drive. And looking up Bowker, that would be where the end location of the proposed building is. And this is looking from the corner of Cran, uh, of uh, Bowker and uh, Cadbro Bay. So you can see the Heritage House, which sits down below the crest of the knoll. And really the two bedroom windows on the upper floor um, are the ones that uh, actually have sight lines through. And uh, so that Really, all of those sight lines and view corridors would be protected with the building coming tight to Cad Broadway and then moving further west. So really, the knoll is retained, the sight lines are retained, and that openness is retained. This is just a close-up shot again. So you can see the, the main floor is down at this elevation, and then there's two windows on the back side, or the, the upper floor of that residence are here, and again, still below the crest of the knoll. Okay, thanks, Mr. Connor. And um, next, was gonna, I was going to ask uh, Graham Hill, as, as chair of the hospital district. Do you want to just, uh, can I ask, Terry, could you just turn the lights on for me? Thanks. If you could introduce yourself soon, you're known to certain people, but not to everyone. I will, sir. Thank you. Good, good evening, Your Worship, members of the Council. What a pleasure it is to be here in your house. My name is Graham Hill. While I'm the mayor of the wonderful town of Neuville, I bring you uh, greetings. And may I offer some honour to you for the terms that you have put in here. I, as you know, sir, I have come and respect very much the work of councils. So for you that are moving ahead, and carrying on, I wish you very well, and it is a pleasure to be here. My purpose here is appearing as a friend of the court, if I may, to provide and ensure that there is a good connectivity around the processes that went on at the Capital Regional District Hospital Board. And, and that includes the engagement of a good deal of research and a good deal of staff time. There are some very shrewd decision makers around the tables that we represent. And I'm here to, to offer up just how that was connect, that connection was drawn. So if I may, I'd like to re refer to my notes. The project is urgently needed to expand the stock of residential care facilities. Now, I think it's appropriate that I'm, if I may, your worship colleagues, to say this. I was a former resident of the town of, of, of Oak Bay, of this district, this fabulous place. I have some to the residents in that, in, that, in that place. I have been there, had family there, and I have seen people mature and age and die there. Having the place inside the community of your, your, your area is a terrific, in my humble view, is a terrific asset to the people who live here. The convenience and the place. This is, we don't only age in, camp, in place, in campuses, <laughs> we don't only age in... in <laughs> it's just been fixed. It's all right. It needs to be fixed. Yeah. Uh, it, it, we don't only age in campuses of care. We age in communities that we have grown into, where our families are. 
And that connectivity of seeing people aging in place like that is one of the strengths of our whole communities. It's a vital part of the whole community, healthy communities that we represent, we are involved. So, let me carry on for a minute. The Capital Regional Hospital District Board has agreed to fund up to 40 million some for the development of this residential care unit. Those are hard won dollars, if I may. They don't come easily. There are multiple demands. There are many issues. And winning that money and making it available for this, what it has to be thought of as a very innovative approach to how to provide care beds. It, it needs to be realized that competition for those dollars and the options, this is a situation. It needs to be respected. The, the arrangements that have been made represent some entrepreneurial thinking. Those in our trade, sir, we deal, who deal in matters of community, the fabric of community, are really looking to the engagement of solutions that fit what it is that we are calling home, these places we call home. So as part of this agreement, the Capital Regional Hospital District will retain ownership of the Mount View site. It will offer a ground lease to the Baptist housing folks. And in that arrangement, you have the proximity of management and control and engagement on the long-term appropriateness of the land use. It will retain, be retained here. The second point I'd like to make is that Oak Bay Lodge property will be transferred to the Vancouver Island Health Authority from them to the Capital Regional Hospital District. The Capital Regional Hospital District in the last few years has become a very mature, wise manager of resources. If you take a careful look, and you would know, sir, and members around the round board here, panel, you would know just how significant that is. There's some very good decision making being done there. Vancouver Island Health Authority will enter into a commercial leases for two buildings for a period of 25 years. Again, not trivial. The time span fits the economic and the, and the, and the management practices of money management these days. That's a good deal. And Vancouver Island Health will secure and maintain an operating agreement to ensure the operation of facilities for the term and the lease of the buildings. And folks, what that means is that the consequential costs are being absorbed in terms of the operating agreements that have been presented here. Material. So, to conclude, without the approval of this variance, which is, an inter which is integral to the overall development of the Oak Bay Lodge project and the Mount View project, the VINA funding for the 25-year term, which would allow for the financing and operation of replacement <coughs> care beds, shut up, of the region, will be at risk. Having said that, then further, if the variance is not approved, and the Vancouver Island Health Authority does not realize 320 beds at the Oak Bay Lodge site, it is likely that the Capital Regional Hospital District participation in both this project and the Mount View project will have to be renegotiated. Now, that's, not, that's the reality. That's not, that's not an impending um, um, threat. It's re that's the reality of the circumstances in which we're in. I, um, I would urge your, 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 your serious consideration and engagement, of course, and I am not wanting you at all, to, uh, your, your Worship, to in, intrude into the sovereign affairs here, but simply to be a, uh, a resource to the court. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Grant Hill. Um, any questions? Um, uh, Councilor Johnson? Yes. I'm not sure what to call him. Your worship, Hill? No, no, no. Your chair, Hill? Chair, chair, Hill. chair, chair. Hill. That's why I'm here. Thank yeah. you. Um, one of the concerns, and I'm, I'm not sure if you can address it, but I can ask anyways. One of the concerns that the, uh, the neighbors have had yeah. is that the consultation period or consultation process came very late in the game, if you will, mm -hmm. and that a lot of these other decisions in terms of the number of beds and all of these other things had been done earlier at a time, and, and, and these are critical decisions which drive the back end of the, uh, of the process. So the question I suppose they would have, and I would pose on their behalf, and certainly I'm interested in the answer too, is, what about that early part of the process? Right. What kind of 
responsibility that the hospital board have in terms of consulting? Did you see that as your role or VHA's role? Who had that role and, and what happened at that time? I think I can speak a little to that. I, I can't speak to the sovereign roles of your of, 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 of Europe. You guys will be on the hot seat for that. Right. And that's, see, we came at the end <laughs> yes, of I, the I process. Understand. But we'd like to know always what happened at the early part. It's, it's, like a, it's like a funnel that's come down. Yes, I, I appreciate that. Here's the challenge that really... You're looking at limited funds. You're looking at desperate need. And what is happening is people come together in an entrepreneurial fashion and they engage in dialogue at, that, at the staff-like level. They must, in order to put deals together, they deal behind cam in camera, they deal at the negotiating level, and you end up with proposition coming out of that when much of, the, much of this, this, this discussion has gone on. You bring it down to something that you can then take forward to a board. That is how it is when you're arranging different parties. You mentioned there are many parties in this. And so when you bring those together, you need to engage in what are the opportunities, what are the challenges, what are the risks, what are the exposures, and how might we find a formula that brings us through that. That was difficult work. It took time, and it took initiatives that were not usual. This, is a, this represents entrepreneurial thinking at, at a staff level and at, a, at an organizational level. There is, in my mind, this is helpful, but in my mind, there has been no um, um, wrongful process here at all from the board side, from the Capital Regional Hospital District Court. None at all. But what it has meant is that you are facing, as opposed to being, a, a, say, a specific responsibility for town, you, you have you've been given a deal that, in which a great deal of work has already been done. And that's the reality. And, but in terms of us, uh, our input at that level, because that seems to me to be where the, 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 the important decision was in terms of setting the number of beds that we would get here. I, I, think, there's, I think there is there are trade-offs there. Um, but what about Councilor? our community's input at that point? How was that structured or was it was thought given? Remember this is the Capital Regional Hospital District. It's the board, it is the, it is, its membership is directly that of the Capital Regional uh, Board itself. You have representation there. You have representation at the various at the various standing the planning and transportation committee, which is a subcommittee for this. So there is representation there. Your worship. But you didn't go. In other words, there wasn't a public process at that point. Not in our not, not in percentage. our particular case. No, it's not our role. All right. I will check with staff if I may. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So who's our representation then at that level? I, your you your mayor is. So you would have been part of these discussions, Your Worship? Or these, these at the board level, level. At the board level, not at the staff level. Yes. So the, there are two. There are two, in, the Capital Regional Hospital District works through an advisory committee that hears the various cases and supplement and, supplement and, and the proposals. And at that, there is representation. Um, sometimes your council, the, the alternate, sits there. I think that's right. I think that's right. I'm looking at him, trying to get. Trying to get an acknowledgement. Is, uh, do you sit at that occasionally? No, I don't think you do. No, no. Very, very rarely. Very rarely. Whenever he can avoid it. No, right, right. <laughs> because these are special. So Whenever what we have is, uh, uh, thank you, through the chair, is an advisory committee that hears the groundwork that goes on. We put together and then we make recommendations to the collective board, the Capital Regional Hospital District Board. So, I mean, I, I, I understand, Chair Hill, that. Uh, and I, I'm not questioning it for a minute. The good minds at the table here, um, the qualified decision makers there. But um, just to follow up on Councillor Jensen's comments, is that we just heard, we just got this in front of us in September. That's when mm -hmm. Rob meant in August. It was August. It was August. 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 Yeah, yeah. But really had a good look at it in September on behalf of our community, mm -hmm. and that. That's way down the line here, and we're trying to make a decision. Then we're given all these time pressures because for financial considerations. Yes. And our community is asking themselves, is this the right project in the right place? Now, I mean, we'll, I'll go along with the number of beds, but we never even had an opportunity to consider whether this piece of land 
is the best land for this project in this community. And I guess what's troubling me is, you know, Oak Bay is a really good player at the regional level. Yes. We, we participate and we cooperate. And on this project, I haven't heard a single person say this is a bad project. But with all due respect to this community, where is the consultation where our community has had some input in the, pla the, the placement of this project in the right place? And that's not happened. And I think our community is very frustrated I, around I, this I process. Can feel that. I can feel that. Let me check this stuff for a moment. I'd like to introduce, if I may, Your Worship, Public Prophet uh, Simon. We, we actually you know him. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, so this process, as was described by uh, Mr. Johnson, was an RFP process where Baptist Housing uh, responded to the proposal request from NEHA. And uh, as part of that process, uh, our involvement was to essentially secure uh, the ability to retain these units within the region and to, to replace the units with our funding uh, contribution. Uh, the Baptist Housing uh, Group uh, worked on bringing forward the Oak Bay Lodge replacement project as part of that proposal and the information put to the board was in order to uh, make that work within the bounds of the RFP uh, we had to realize 320 units uh, on that site. Because this was a variance permit application uh, the questions of land use and the questions of uh, uh, the, the land being uh, zoned for the appropriate use weren't, weren't there. Uh, the issue of, of, of height and realizing that 320 units at the time was not fully known because uh, the project hadn't been fully designed. But uh, essentially the variance permit uh, process uh, uh, has been challenging to get a, a larger footprint as a pretty debate here. And the only way to really realize those 320 units and, and achieve the RP is to see the variance granted. And what we're essentially saying is uh, if, if that can't uh, be agreed to by council, uh, the RFP uh, can't be met and the proposal will have to be rethought and renegotiated time. So uh, in, in, as a follow-up to that question, no other site was looked at in Oak Bay because the zoning was already in place mm -hmm. and the Oak Bay Lodge needed to be replaced. Is that basically that's correct, as well as the agreement to transfer the land to the hospital district is fundamental to the uh, uh, arrangement the hospital district made. So to take public ownership of the site, uh, the original RP, as Mr. Johnson mentioned, included the option of selling the site uh, for private purposes and relocating the project to another location. Okay. Can I, can I just ask a question? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. No, it won't be about here. So I know you're the dear man also. <laughs> Which is another hot button. No, no, no. It's not, it's not next week. It's this week. This week. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, I appreciate that once something goes into the RFP, that's not something that you can really publicly consult. I accept that. Could you just walk us through, though, how that 320 got into the RFP and what the public process was in advance of that? In other words, was there a public process in coming to the 320 number for Oak Bay? Because that, that seems to, you'll agree, that drives the height and the, and the mass. There, there was a competitive process to realize that many units as part of responding to the RP. And uh, to achieve that uh, within the, uh, the uh, per diem allowances and the uh, capital cost allowances, mm -hmm. and to realize the, the most out of the two sites we had available, uh, that drove the 320 number. So um, there was an option of, of moving some from one site, site A to site B, depending on this profitability? Is that what? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. So the, the site in Sandwich had to be rezoned. And as previously mentioned, that uh, there was some 600 units realized on that site, including uh, a supportive housing uh, project for the homeless, uh, affordable uh, seniors housing project, as well as uh, a, a nonprofit housing corporation project, as well as the 260 units of, uh, of the, con the residential care beds. So, uh, the rezoning process and working with that community achieved uh, seven different projects on that site, uh, utilizing that site to its fullest. And uh, the, uh, as, as that building is a seven-story building as well, um, the footprints uh, limited us from looking at larger, uh, larger building envelope as part of that rezoning process. So it was, 
it was the leftover number of beds after that process. Is that, is that, is that put it in a nutshell? No, the, the design, I think, that the, that the architects of Baptist put together looked at the suitability of the site, and uh, you've heard a lot about the 20 unit yes. neighborhoods and that whole design configuration was within seven stories, and that resulted in these two building designs. What I'm saying is, uh, had you been able to put another 20 or another 40, then the Oak Bay one would have necessarily been smaller. It, it might have. Uh, yeah, the Sanders one would have been big. Yeah, it might right. have been no, bigger. Uh, again, this mix of 20 units and neighborhoods yeah. and configuration had a lot to do with the design. Okay. okay. But the number, just so we get clear, the number is driven by by that that VHA figure to replace the number of beds, given the number of units that are being phased out. That, that's correct. And, and if you and don't do that number, then you're going down instead of either maintaining or going up. That's I mean, right. that's, and as we all age, that is a key consideration that must be for VHAR. And, and for the hospital district, uh, we, we want to realize the most beds we can in this uh, arrangement. Uh, each bed, uh, as Mr. Walters indicated, there's pressure for beds to be redeveloped or placed uh, up island. Uh, we, we're trying to achieve the most replacement beds as well as the most new beds as we can within a limited funding level. Okay. Okay. Councilman. Um, one more question. Um, I mean, it's very clear to me that, uh, you know, you've worked very hard to get the money to pay for these beds. And gosh knows we've needed these beds. I mean, that that's just the obvious, that we've needed these re residential care beds for for some time. But help me understand this this thing around uh, this opportunity for funding and, and the time limit, if you will. Um, I, what I'm understanding, if like hypothetically Oak Bay turned this down, then the project would collapse, and the funding would disappear, uh, or or what would happen? Like let's, I'm let's, not sure that's a question. I think it's a question for Beaver, is it? Is it a Beaver? Yeah, okay, so okay. why don't we put it to, to Mr. Johnson as opposed to? I'll let you restate. Okay. What, what I'm trying to uh, get clear in my mind is how we, we've got a, a, a time pressure that's right. primarily driven from what I'm understanding um, uh, the, 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 to, to ensure that, we ret that you retain the financing on this right. project. And I understand the date mm -hmm. is December 15. So just, just play this out for a minute sure. with me so I understand. But let's say this were to be turned down, the project were to be turned down, but the beds still need to be found somewhere else. So what would happen, like, would, would, would you go elsewhere to obtain funding to finance the project in another location? Or like, would you still be able to acquire the financing to do this in another place if it were not Oak Bay? Okay, sounds like a number of questions. I'll try to answer them, and if I fail to answer at all, please let me know. <laughs> so going back historically, the RFP came out in the beginning of 2010. And so we submitted our response to the RFP, which was, at that time, uh, the Malview Heights was completing its rezoning process with the 260. So the RFP called for 320 beds to be replaced, which is the combination of care beds at Oak Bay and Mount Tomey. Plus it asked if, if possible, they would like to add another 100 units if they could afford it. So we responded by, by uh, working on the project, knowing that we, the rezoning had just occurred at Mount View with 260. So to partly answer your question, when you do the math, um, then in essence, 320 came to Oak Bay. So when we put our proposal together in the beginning of 2010, we had to have financial letter from our financing at that time in terms of how we were gonna finance the deal. We had to be able to demonstrate that at the time of the RFP. So the process though has gone from the beginning of 2010 until where we are today, which is late fall of 2011. The finance company indicated to us that because of the nature of this deal, and I'll explain the nature of it, the nature of the deal is they are prepared to uh, provide 100% of the financing upfront, put it into escrow, and secure the interest rate today. And that interest rate will be secured for the next 25 years. 
And that's the only way they can secure the interest rate if they put all the funding up front. So that's a very unique situation and circumstance which guarantees the funding. We're able to do that without any CMHC insurance on the project, and we had limited parties that we could go to. We did go to tender with respect to the financing and looked at the financial market. And in that respect, we also sought BC Housing's assistance to see if they could help us because we have a number of projects with BC Housing and have looked at financing, and they have even done financing in the care, care uh, residential care field. When we went with them, we ended up receiving tenders from uh, 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 charter banks uh, in Canada here, and they could not match the deal. The two significant differences is charter bank cannot go beyond 10 years in terms of setting the term, and secondly, they would still require CMHC insurance on the deal. So that led us to conclude that this was a great financial deal that was available to us. We were not able to find anyone else that could offer that financing. And so what happened as time went on, because they have set the money aside, they have indicated to us that if you can't complete a deal by the end of this December, then in essence, they can't continue to hold the money. And so they would be starting all over in terms of whether or not you were able to renegotiate a deal with them or whether they would even be interested. So they have left an offer term sheet to us for the deal as it is currently that says we must draw the money down by December 15th in order to conclude this deal. And when you work from December 15th backwards in terms of when do you actually then have to close the deal and such, that creates the timeline in respect to that. Have I answered all of your I, I, I questions? I think I understand what you're saying. So okay. if, the, if the project didn't work here, you'd have to probably go back to the drawing board and refinance, and it probably wouldn't be as good a terms as what you're been able to apply. Not only might it not be as good a terms, we, we might not be able to secure the finance, is the reality, because we couldn't get, we didn't have any other bidders for the financing with those terms. So, so setting aside the financing for a moment, Mr. Johnson. Yes. What about um, if, if it was turned down here on, on the variance, what, what would then happen? What's, what's the process then? If it's turned down on the variance, then we can't demonstrate that the building is going to go forward. So, absolutely. So, and so but you still need to replace the beds. So, uh, well, we would, in terms of the RFP, our proposal was to replace the beds, and this was the option. So we don't have a fallback option, per se, in terms of uh, another site, uh, whether it be in Obey or outside of Obey. There is no other option that we have for that. I will correct one other thing, though, that was mentioned, just to be clear for the record. Mm -hmm. The Capital Region of District is not aware uh, of what Baptist Housing was putting together in the RFP process. Mm -hmm. We did look at other sites in terms of trying to say, is there anywhere else in Obey that this could be placed? We did look in terms of across the street from our existing Marion Village and Shannon Oaks location in terms of the rec site. Um, and would have, if we could have fit it on there, we would have come to Oak Bay and said, we have a, an option here in terms of we can fit the building on, would you consider this? However, when we went through the design process of looking at both sides of the site of rec, the rec center, we couldn't fit the building on. Furthermore, on the now I'm going to get my directions wrong, probably, is it? The, yeah, the Boker Creek side became very complex in, uh, in terms of the fact that uh, that's where the uh, regional sewer line comes through. And, it, and we couldn't get the building to fit on entirely. We would have to go to the school board to actually cross over top onto their property as well as cross over the sewer. So it wasn't possible to even try to shoehorn to, to fit the building in on that site. And in terms of the other parking lot site, it didn't have the dimensional size that was necessary to fit the neighborhood side. Just on that point, because I, I was curious that you had, I, I'm not sure if you consulted Obey or just looked at that site. So, um, and you're saying there wasn't enough land. So did you just consider there the parking lot or the street as well? We did not consider crossing the street. Um, I don't think that would have been prudent to have crossed the street in terms of having the building seven story, six stories above, over top of the street. On top of the street. Take the street. To take the street and close the street? 
Yeah, built we, it on the street. We did not. We did not see that as a, as an option. Like, was there consultation with Oak Bay around that? Closing the street, no. So was that discussed? Who would? So that there, was, I'm sorry. Be, well, that's because some of our residents have brought that up here. The reason they brought it up is because we mentioned it Tuesday night that we looked at other sites. Um, and so that's when I mentioned Tuesday night that we looked at, at the wreck property. And I think, I think probably you looked at a site that was already zoned. Well, it, because it, it, if you looked at the wreck center site, that is not even, re, that is not even zoned. That, that's another issue in respect to it. But the other issues were um, we couldn't get parking on. There was a number of things that ruled it out. The property wasn't large enough. There was, there was the, the, the regional sewer system coming through, cutting across it. We couldn't get enough parking into the, uh, because you can't go underground there with the water levels, at least not, not any lower than what your existing is at the entry. So you couldn't create enough parking. So there was just thing after, item after item that didn't make it work. But uh, we did not think we could close the street. That was but never... it, 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 okay, but it is a part of the community plan. It's institutional. It's institutional care. Is it not? No, it's, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's not. It's part of the official community you, plan. You would have, have asked you, staff about that, please. Uh, no, what you asked me today was was uh, what is it designated in yes. the OCP? Yes, it's designated institutional, so it could be zoned. Mm -hmm. It or, could be zoned. Yes, it, could, it would have, have to be rezoned, yeah. but it isn't currently. It has to no, be zoned. but why would that have been a to rezone it, why would that? Because rezoning is really easy in Oak Bay. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a problem with windows, okay? <laughs> Just, so rezoning that, is, is not the same as a variance. Yeah, no, you know, I understand right? the difference, but I mean, it wasn't insurmountable, but it just was not a process you were prepared to go through, the rezoning. We didn't see it as reasonable. Yeah. Okay. And so then the other, just for the final question, because I also read in the minutes of the, the neighborhood meeting was that um, that during a similar pro, um, project uh, in Sandwich that there had been extensive two-year consultation with the community. That's what, how the interpretation from the neighborhood. So maybe this has already been answered here, I'm not sure, but so why did not Obey had the opportunity for that? So the consultation. The Sandage project was a rezoning in terms of it was a school property that was being reconverted, so it had to have the proper rezoning. And so it, the rezoning requirements required going through that public process of consultation and period of time in terms of what would be identified there. And that was uh, the role of the Capital Regional District in that project. They were the ones that took it through the rezoning. However, we were of assistance in terms of what was necessary from a from a building footprint, what was needed from a land perspective. Your Worship, may I just add one point? There? Okay, I am aware of time. Yep. Thank you. Just, just a moment to the benefit. Yep. Yeah. The, 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 the science project is one that's been a work in progress for a long time. This particular initiative came along partly through that. So the reasons for the rezoning opportunity, there was space there. But it was this, that was done without an awareness of what this particular project had presented. So this came along as an opportunity later. Okay. okay. Thank uh, you, Councillor Hubbard. Do you have a question, Mr. Johnson? I do. Just a couple of ones. That I promised a couple of people I would ask. Certainly. The first one was a number of people are very sad to see the name Old Bay Lodge disappearing. And is there any chance it can be saved? This is my question. This is a question I said I would ask. Hmm. Um, I had not heard that before, well, so heard it uh, I've heard it now in respect to that and certainly you could uh, take that under consideration. Okay. The, the next question was, and, and I'm a little out of touch on this, somebody said, oh, if you, if you need to go into complex care and you have a lot of income or a lot of assets, you can't get in because you, if you're rich, you can't get in. And I said, well, my recollection is that if your doctor says you qualify, then you go in, you're entitled to go in, and the rate you pay will depend on either your assets or your income. Is, is that correct? Okay, first of all, no one is denied access to publicly funded residential care beds. Right. There is a portion that is a co-payment that a resident will pay, and there is a, a, a scale in terms of what, what person's capability or assets are in respect to what they would pay, and that has a limit, though, in terms of what that would be. 
I don't have the exact numbers. So it here. hasn't changed from years ago? No. It hasn't other than uh, slight changes from an inflationary point of view in terms of yeah. on the residential portion or increases that the, the uh, Ministry of Health has seen deemed to be appropriate increases. Okay. And the final question that these people asked was they were really convinced that the building could be, new, could be moved another five meters towards Cabo Bay Road. And my, my belief is you've moved it as far as it could go, but I'd like you to just confirm that. Uh, I, I can ask my architect, but I do believe I can answer that. Five meters further would put it on the street. In the middle of the street. Uh, I, well, not necessarily the middle, but it would certainly put it on the edge. It would be, it would be zero lot line, and uh, okay. it's just not practical. No. All right. the grade I think that. perhaps these people were looking at the previous plans. That's that's possible. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Any other questions? If not, thanks very much. Is that the uh, complete presentation? Did anyone want to speak to the traffic? I mean, I've read the traffic. I think members of council have read the traffic. Is there anyone who wants to uh, add to that? It's um, pretty straightforward. Yeah, it, it is pretty straightforward. I think the, the, the main points that we were asking them to look at was the parking demand versus what we were proposing because we were uh, requesting a variance on the parking. Mm -hmm. And I think staff have also done some of their own research with adjacent municipalities. They have, yes. And those findings are consistent with what our traffic consultant has said. And they actually went out and did measured counts, both midweek and weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and they have confirmed that parking in the range of the 0.3 to 03 which was what we're asking for, and it's consistent with other municipalities, mm -hmm. is the actual demand. Mm -hmm. The existing building does not meet its parking demand on site and needs the street parking. <coughs> with the elimination of the pay parking, with the increase in parking to 107 spaces, we will be able to meet all of our parking demand on site. So that means that there will not be any pressure on street parking in the neighborhood. The second thing we asked them to look at was our concept of closing down Cranmore. Could we make that work and what would be impact on Cadbro Bay Road? And they have confirmed that the service levels on Cadbro Bay Road um, um, can be met, that those uh, and that single entrance point will work, and the addition of the right out will actually make it work better. And um, so from a, their point of view, uh, that is a, a, a supportable proposition and it will, really will eliminate all of the traffic onto Cranmore that's coming out that second entrance because what they found in doing their survey was all the entrances to the site were off of Cadbro, all of the exits pre predominantly were coming off of Cranmore. So we'll be removing all of that exiting traffic onto the adjacent streets. And uh, from, from anecdotal comments from the neighborhoods, the the direct link along sidewalk routes to the school, Cranmore, is, is that one busy street. So I think there is, um, as the public benefits list had indicated, there's potential of that improving the safety of Cranmore through that yeah, one change. And I, 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 I agree with you, that's definitely a public benefit. Mr. Thomason, do you have any comments on that? Uh, no, I, I, the parking uh, Parking facilities bylaw is a little outdated and uh, little outdated. Uh, comparison. <laughs> it's, with a, it's actually a negotiating tool. <laughs> you start with the impossible and you work from there. Comparison with the other 13 minutes. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's very is. clear. Yeah. yeah. So, so my only question would be, I'm not sure it's fair to ask you, Mr. Kaya, uh, but I see Mr. Waldner sitting there. Um, you know, the, the reason why we've had all the issues around parking <coughs> in that area and actually have to post to our parking in the area is because there's paid parking on site and there never used to be paid parking on site and when paid parking was not on site frankly it wasn't an issue in the neighborhood mm -hmm. the moment that paid parking came on site obviously uh, employees don't want to pay so they park off site is free around there so it's it's a great scenario uh, I, you know I, and I understand that it's a great scenario uh, with the parking, as long as you don't introduce paid parking in two years' time, because then people would say, well, so much for that theory, uh, now everyone's going to move on to the streets again. So, I don't think it's fair to ask you, but it's actually, it's been talked about three or four times, I never asked a question, but now it's in the document. Um, so, what is, what is, what is with 
I mean, it, it went to pay parking. So now it's going back. And is that part of the philosophy of how you run the establishment? Um, Mayor, it was our choice because we realized it was an issue in terms of looking at our, our financial proposal in the RFP yep. to, to not include a revenue line for pay parking. Okay. And so we have put our proposal in based on it being uh, that there would be no pay parking whatsoever on the site. And so we did that very deliberately in the RFP process. And obviously that, that's just a small factor in terms of looking at in the RFP process, the health authority has the responsibility to find the best price and to achieve the highest number of units. And we were successful in doing that with that being no pay parking. Okay, so that's so the best agreement I, between you and, and it's, VHAR, is it? It, uh, it is what we have put in our documents and we put on record here publicly. Yeah, good. That's, I just wanted to get it on yeah. the record. So. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I just have a, a question for our staff. Uh, rising from that line of questioning, and that is to uh, Mr. Brennan. In, in terms of how we uh, agree to that, in other words, can we make this part of a kind of a, uh, the, the process of going through and approving this variance in parking? So essentially, it would be like, a, I, you know, I suppose, if it, uh, in other situations, you might call it a covenant on the land. Is it possible to do something like that? So we don't, in uh, 10 or 25 uh, years, see it uh, made into pay parking. How would we guarantee that in uh, the, for the length of the, uh, uh, the operating agreement, for instance? Um, <clears throat> well, are, are you saying that you're saying that uh, the requirement for not having pay parking is a condition of getting the, the variance? Well, assuming we come to that agreement uh, at this table, uh, yes, assuming we make that as a condition, because quite frankly, uh, um, that's, I think, one of the, the benefits of having uh, free parking is that you take the cars off the streets, mm -hmm. and that would be a significant benefit for uh, the adjoining residents. Well, if you, if you could make the case that um, the requirement not to have paid parking is essential to whether the variance is, is, is permissible or not, then I, I, I suppose you could that, make, make that part of, of it. Um, the exact mechanism, I would have to give that some thought. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask a, just, I, I just need some direction from council. This is a, a council meeting. We've asked for a presentation to come back. Is it your wish to hear from the public again at this time? Okay. So. I, I would think that the, the members of the public can come here expecting that. I know we have heard a lot, as, uh, as Councillor Herbert has said, but uh, there's also a lot new. I think we need to hear them on. And I thought you were going to call on Mr. Weldner. Uh, well, I keep, I keep on questions. threatening to call on him. Uh, every time someone else jumps up to answer the question. So, uh, got a good defense team there. Uh, okay. <laughs> Mr. Weldner, do you want to take the witness stand, please? <laughs> <laughs> so, do uh, you want to make any opening comments? You know, I, I appreciate that, Worship. Um, could you, could you, I'm sorry the mic is acting up again. We're going to have to try and get that fixed again. It's something to do with the number of fillings that you have. Okay. <laughs> um, with that gold or silver or whatever. Yeah. Plan. <laughs> That is hard place to be, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Anyway, um, thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, I just want to reaffirm uh, the Bank of Ireland Health Authority's okay. strong commitment to this project. I think much of what I was planning to say this evening has already been said, uh, very ably by my colleagues in the front row here. From VIA's perspective, we have a huge need to grow, develop, and upgrade the stock of our residential housing facility uh, in the Greater Victoria area within local communities, but up and down across the island. We do have a, a pressing need to improve the number and quality of spaces that we have. And we believe that the proposal that went to our board for approval and subsequently went to an RFP is an excellent proposal. I believe that the, the plan, the challenging to some individuals within the community, will provide the greatest need 
uh, to be met and will provide a benefit for the greatest number of people. I think it's very important to maintain significant capacity within each of the communities if at all possible. Uh, a number of questions were asked as to why this number of beds in this location. Um, we have, we own a zoned property in Oak Bay and we believe that was the right property. I'd heard from many people that they wanted to maintain a facility in Oak Bay of significance. The application came before council in May for consideration of the various permit, not in September, uh, if I can just correct that, it came in May to the staff. And we've been working with council. We've been working with council since that date and as you know have been here uh, on a number of occasions. But I, but I know this is hard. I, I absolutely understand the depth of feeling and the strength of feeling in the community. Uh, and this is, I understand, not an easy decision for council to make. But I do believe this is an excellent project. I believe it would be in the best interest of all concerned. And from Bank Around Health Authority's perspective, we are very keen to see this uh, project go forward here in Oakley. Okay, now I think there's some questions. Councillor Bethany. Um, just um, want to ask once again, because um, this is a question that comes up um, a lot to me, is um, the adult daycare. Can you address that? Because a lot of people think that the adult daycare <coughs> is going to be taken out altogether, but from what I heard you say standing there, you were committing to um, continuing on the adult daycare. Is that correct? Yeah, this wasn't part of the formal <coughs> RFP, but uh, that, that service is funded. We have no plans to remove that funding. I'd absolutely be delighted to confirm on the record that we will maintain uh, an adult uh, daycare service. It's an, e it's an excellent part of our service and I can confirm that uh, if the facility goes forward here <coughs> in Oak Bay, we will continue to provide that service locally. Okay, you have more questions? Yes, Councillor Brayton. And Councillor Jess and then Councillor Nick. Yeah, and I was a little, uh, I was a little concerned uh, on the list of benefits that I saw that uh, Mr. Johnson put out, he, he used the word potential adult day services. Mm -hmm. So I assume that, uh, I'm not sure why he used that word, but I assume that, that well, was, I can, I can he perhaps, was being careful. No, I can perhaps help. The, the current RFP that uh, Baptist Housing responded to does not include that as a core part of the, the bid that we have accepted. I think what we have identified subsequently is that Baptist Housing have created a space within the new building uh, or the indicative design of the new building for such a service uh, to be delivered and I'm very happy to confirm that subject of course to uh, a negotiation between Baptist Housing and VHA and I'm sure neither of us would be unreasonable in that negotiation that we'd be pleased to continue that service in the community. So I take it the use of the word potential is because you haven't fully agreed? Well we, we, don't, have a, we don't have a building. Well, I appreciate that. That is a, that is it's a, minor, a, point. a, a minor point. Come on now. Now, the question I had, though, and it gets back to the kinds of questions I was asking earlier uh, to others in terms of, you know, where the consultation process uh, has been at. And, you know, we kind of got late in the game in terms of uh, the, the neighbors uh, and, and our community generally. And then, because there was a little... Um, note in the uh, one of the reports we got. This was a report uh, on um, the public consultation that took place recently. It was a multi-page report and there was a line in there I just wanted you to kind of speak to if you wouldn't mind uh, and just to uh, elaborate on because it was just a kind of a one-liner but it kind of caught my attention and and uh, it said and, essentially said, and I can read it out to you, Howard Walner confirmed that he had discussions with the District of Oak Bay over the past year, getting shortly after the RFP was announced to keep the district apprised of the process. Can you kind of elaborate on what was going on during those discussions and how things kind of evolved? Uh, not specifically, but I do remember being in front of the council here. I don't remember the exact date, but I believe it was about a year ago when we came to tell the council our plans and mention the fact that we were going out to an RFP and I apologize, I don't have the date. But this is something that we have been talking about openly in the community for some time. Although I think it's fair to say not specifically about the number of beds that would be coming here, but rather of the need and the wish to replace and renew Oakby Lodge yeah, in I some mean, fashion. You, you did come here, you talk, sorry, you did come here, you did talk about it, there were questions. I think, I think what didn't come out in those, uh, and which is really 
what we're here discussing, in fact. It's not the zoning. It's not, uh, in fact, originally there was a discussion about the need for replacement. That was actually okay. the crux. It, it was two things. It was the need for replacement and maintaining in public hands and not having it privately run. Okay. Those are the two things. Mm -hmm. um, and that was all the discussion. The discussion was not about the height, was not about the variance. Absolutely correct. That's, that's, that's what's, what's caused everything here yeah. is, is what you're asking for. Those two, two things that we were concerned about when yeah. you first came a year ago, more than a year ago, those two things have been addressed. Yeah. Your worship has the credit, and of course until we got the RFP back and evaluated the RFP, and awarded a preferred tender, we were not in a position to ourselves comprehend what would happen to size, scale, location. But as soon as we did, and as soon as we <coughs> notified the preferred proponent, a formal application came before your administration at the staff level. When it says here shortly after the RFP was announced to keep the prize, so these are the times that you've come here and, and told us how things are going. That's great. You know, getting back to what I think the neighbors uh, were interested in knowing about, and that was what consideration had been given to other properties in, uh, uh, in the community. And is there a better fit? Uh, sure. and, uh, and we don't have a planner on staff, nor if we hired one to assist us in this, so um, we don't have the expertise generally on, on this panel. <coughs> but um, you know, I, I appreciate them, your clarification. So, so we've looked extensively, and I, I would have one street out of your borough, your worship, but I know that you're... Two. Two, okay. Yeah. Um, actually a bit further. Are you still living on that street? Yeah. Rockland area? That street, yeah. So you're actually about three or three, four. <laughs> My apologies. That's okay. No one told me when I came to the community. No, I know. All <laughs> <laughs> joking aside, but um, I know the community very well. So we looked long and hard at what might be available in the community that would be practical and realistic and zoned, and subject to something very significant being changed or given um, from council to the uh, or the CRD to make this possible. There are, uh, as you know, there are very few sites that would become available for, for a project like this. Okay, I think, uh, do you have a question? Yeah, well, okay. I guess I'm still stuck on the alternative project idea, uh, the uh, alternative placement, but um, I think I'm going to reserve my questions for for staff. So, I mean, you're telling me that other sites in Oak Bay were explored and none of them were viable for this project, is what That's you're saying, because of, res uh, you know, rezoning, which would slow the project down primarily? Yeah, rezoning realistically would take two years. In, a, in a other communities. Oh, okay. I don't know what you're taking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean that. I mean, no, no, no I didn't. It, it's tough. You, you protect your community. I understand that. I respect that. But to try and get a reason in Windsor Park, good luck with that. You know, that was probably the other site we identified. And one of the schools, I think, was another site that the school board indicated they would not get. So we, we did some work. That's nice. Okay. okay. I, I think we're through with presentations. Uh, I'm. Council wants to hear from anyone who's got new information. Um, please come forward. If you could, if you could keep your remarks to new information, something else that's come up would be helpful. Your Worship, Council, I'm John Rankin. John Rankin by now. Um, I guess we were we do feel bushwhacked as neighbors because we had understood it just be a few comments tonight, and we had a whole presentation from the other side, and I had been brought up about equal time and uh, fairness, etc., and I expressed my concerns. I won't pursue it any further. Well, actually, um, normally it's not uh, in a council meeting we hear from the presenter, right. because this is, this is a variance. I know, I know it's, it's your home, but it is a variance request, so normally we wouldn't be hearing from the public. We would hear from the public in two weeks' time if the variance goes forward. So actually, we've changed it, Mr. Rankin. So we, we, we actually, and I'm trying to bend over backwards to be fairer than our normal process in order to do that. Right. And I agree there were some extra things put in, and that's why I'm giving the flexibility to allow you to present. I appreciate without, that. Without notification in advance. Okay, um, well, let's continue, but thank you for okay. your time. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to, I'm sure it was a mistake on the part of Mr. Johnson 
um, was that there was no parking study presented at the meeting, at the consultation meeting. We asked for it, he said he could not disclose it, so we did not hear about it until just now. Um, as far as the consultation process, which I would like to say about, because everyone here said they want to know what happened, and let's hear the other side, is that <clears throat> honestly, as a neighborhood, we did not feel that it was a consultation process. There was no participation in, in uh, modifying regulations or anything like that. Ahead of time, just like they had spent a lot of time, the neighborhood had gotten together for a few hours, a number of us, to present ideas, to, to develop it. We had prepared ourselves for, uh, for the meeting. But when we got there, it was made quite clear from the beginning that there was no negotiations, no reduction in the 320. Economies of scales were quoted, the budget again was quoted, or, uh, and the fact it did go to, to the lowest bidder. Do we know if someone else presented a four or five story building that, that, that was more fitted? We don't know. We were told no reduction in six floors. We were clearly told, quote unquote, they've already wiggled, no more wiggle room left. Um, and the other points you had heard, and of course the financial pressures and people uh, waiting for beds. So basically it's the same as before, take it or leave it, refusing to do a consultation, which has been the problem from day one, which they confirm. Uh, no solid information has yet been presented to council to assess the height. Uh, and yes, we know, and this is new information I think because of the fact is it came up last time, is that we bought our homes, we knew the lodge was there. Um, yes, we knew it, but we also knew that we had bylaws. We also knew we had council that cared and considered okay for four stories. Uh, and we only had 151,000. <coughs> Just imagine if down on Beach Drive, you said every apartment building could go up two stories, another two stories, or increase 49% capacity. And we presented in our drawings is that we were trying to figure out what the impact is. And all you have to do is just to, you know, we, we gave the drawings of the place downtown, the atrium, 200,000 square feet. You're putting in 240,000 square foot building in the middle of a residential area. Not the 150, 154,000 you have now. It's 15% bigger than the atrium. It's not just a variance. It's a massive variance change that's being requested in the terms of the size of the building. So all I like to say is that we do feel that the gain is far too large. The process has not been done. It's been done before properly. And again, they use the excuse, like even here, I brought up last time, what don't you believe? They did consultation. So I'll leave it to you. Of course, we, I'm very concerned about the process. I think you've, I'm not convinced. Just because of, it's been <coughs> dictated, you can tell by the number of suits that sit in the front row about uh, oh. pressure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Carson. My name is Michael Hayes. I live at 1839 Hampshire Road. Uh, my property does not back on to uh, the proposed development, but we do look at it. Um, is it possible to revisit uh, Mr. Cotter's slides? Uh, with, with the little red dotted lines on them. I, I am thinking particularly of the ones that are taken from Cadbury Bay Road looking uh, south. <coughs> Mr. Hayes, could you, just, uh, sorry, for my everyone, I, I know you said you were on, on Hampshire, right? Uh, you said you were on Hampshire Road? Yes. Uh, which, which side of the road are you on? Uh, we're on the odd numbered side, so we look across, we are looking from our, our front of our house, looks across at the uh, proposed development. Okay, okay. The reason I, I'm asking uh, that we look at this, uh, these slides again, is to reiterate a point that uh, John Rankin just made. There have been no meaningful attempts to demonstrate to council or to the community the mass or um, the physical presence of this structure on this site. Now, all of the ones, the slides that pre preceded this one, essentially looked at the building hidden behind trees on Hampshire Road. But I think the most telling slides are this one and the next one. Uh, can we go to the one previous to this? Uh, all right, thank you right there. Now, if you notice, 
This building has now been pulled down, as I understand it, within about 15 feet of the sidewalk. Is that right? And we're asking for a, you're asking for a variance yeah. uh, encroaching on the sidewalk. And I'm not right in saying that that red dotted building we're looking at is six stories high. Indicating the location of that building face. No, but is 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 that a six-story mass? So, so can you answer? I answer through the chair. Yep. No. No. You answer through the chair. Is an Thank you. I am. I am. I am asking. Uh, no, it's meant to be. Yeah, that's okay. it, just, it flows through my blood. Just, yes. yeah. <laughs> this is not a measured drawing. It is indicated to to show the impact of the placement of the building relative to the view corridors that are being preserved. Oh. Oh. Right. Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, what I find interesting about this diagram, which is not to scale, is A, that's a problem. We have not had proper, um, with all the technology of overlaying and all the rest of stuff that you can do in, in, in graphics design these days, yes, we have not seen any drawings which really put the mass of this building in the context of the community over which it will rise. If this is even, in fact, I don't think it's close, it's but not. look at the top left-hand corner, and then, and then look at the gazebo, and then look at the, the roof of the Heritage House, and tell me that that roof line is not considerably higher than the Heritage House roof line. And also, uh, um, John Rankin mentioned the atrium downtown, and I was looking at the library building yesterday when I was down there, which on uh, Broughton has a six-story uh, facing on it. And I thought, the people on Bowker and Cadbury Bay are going to be looking at a wall of building which is very similar to any downtown structure at six stories. It's going to be imposing, it's going to be inappropriate to the community, um, the, the, the feel of, and the fabric of the community. I feel terribly sorry for the people on Bowker and Cadver Bay um, who in fact will spend a hundred years looking at that wall because it is a hundred years. Um, and I don't know if I need to say this or should they say this, but I did object to the mayor of you Royal being here as chair of the uh, Capital Regional Health Board as a salesman for this project. Um, I understand, and we've asked the question before about whether Mayor Costin, you have a conflict of interest. Um, I'm assuming you participated in debate and voted on these issues. Well, in, with all due respect, to have the chair of that committee come to this council and basically sell this council on this project, I think is highly inappropriate. I think it's extremely inappropriate. And I understand that Mayor Hill once lived in Oak Bay, if I heard him correctly. That's a correct statement. Yes. And I would urge him to move back because I think there's going to be some uh, properties for sale on Hampshire, Christie Way, and Cranmore that are going to go for a very, very low price once this project is built. Okay. Yeah. I, in, 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 in defense of Mayor Hill, I, I think that he was simply trying to give the regional perspective on, on, on this uh, facility. And I think he was speaking not as the mayor of View Royal, but he was, uh, he was speaking as elected regional uh, uh, representative for all of you on facilities that are required in this region. And he introduced himself as the mayor of the world, which he's entitled to do, but he was speaking as a regional election, elected person. So, and he said that he sung at the Old Bay Lodge, which I found disqualified him entirely because anyone's, but uh, he did, he did, he was, you know, he, he offered to come here. I didn't know he was coming until tonight, so. And I'll extend the courtesy to anyone who wants to come to Oak Bay. Please go ahead. Your Worship and Council, Leona Fernet, 1958 Hampshire Road. I'm here to talk about new information only. 
and the new information is the, the parking and variance and traffic study um, is not extensive enough and I don't feel that we should be making decisions based on a study that was um, commissioned by the proponent development company that we as a community look to our council to do due diligence and due diligence in my estimation is it's not just about the parking but the whole impact of the changes to the number of residents and the configuration of care that will take place in this building is, is not being considered here. When you live adjacent to that property, you are woken at night with emergency uh, vehicles coming. On average right now, that's 40 a year. With the increase of patients, that goes up. That, in my estimation, is a cost that has to be borne by the, by the municipality because it is our fire department that provides that service and by the neighbours not only on Hampshire and Cranmore and Kedgore Bay but the, the neighbours on Montreux St. Anne. And so I'm asking this council why have we not done our own traffic study to understand the true impacts of a building this size with the increased staffing and residents that are going to be there. The other new information I will only uh, mirror is that I still am in wonderment as to how this building will really look on this site. And we haven't seen anything that's really tangible to show us what that is. And as a public servant, I think it would be, up, it, it would be totally my responsibility if I were asked to make a decision based on something to have all the facts. And I clearly think we have spent more time talking about numbers and beds and funding. And, and we as a community still don't understand how big that building is going to be. And we are waiting, you know, all the information that's counter to this proposal has been provided by residents. What would the broader community of Oak Bay think of this? And you're making a, a, a fairly significant decision. And finally, and last, I'm really getting sick and tired of the pandering <laughs> to the community about the, the need for this in Oak Bay. There is not one resident that has not said we don't want this in Oak Bay. What we want the residents of Oak Bay to understand is the type of care here that is changing. It will no longer be the lodge. It will no longer be a, comp a campus of care. It will be the largest complex care facility on Vancouver Island. There is no other <coughs> facility on the island with 320 beds for complex care massed in one location. And I say that all tonight. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. I just wanted to uh, pick up on your comment about uh, parking because staff has had a chance to look at the parking report. <coughs> Uh, it's, it's completely normal for a uh, council to ask an applicant to bring forward a parking uh, study. Um, the people who do it, uh, they're well known in the community, they're professional. Uh, they do it for all kinds of municipalities and governments. And, and they just state, state the facts and then we, we basically, and that's why I want to add staff to add to this, we ask staff if they could do a comparison with other parking requirements for similar type of buildings. And you probably haven't had a chance to see it, but you'll notice that the parking requirements in this municipality are far more restrictive than any other municipality in the region. Mr. Thomason, do you want to add to that <coughs> comment? Because I... Uh, yeah, I think there was only, uh, well, there was us that had a much larger uh, parking requirement and one other uh, municipality. All the rest, uh, 12 I think that I looked at, were one per three beds essentially. Okay, and what was Oak Bay? Oak Bay is one per bed. So we were 320 parking spaces. Yeah, so, so, so um, that's, that's the, what's in place and that's why I made that comment an hour ago about it's always a good place to start negotiating. But the comment, it, I, I think I understand the question. 
uh, the, the, the question really is about, have you looked at the, the report itself from a, from a staff point of view, and are you happy with that report? In terms of the parking required for the site, I, I would comment that, yeah, I'm happy with that report. Uh, Dave Marshall might have a comment about the traffic uh, flows itself. I'm not sure if he, uh, he's had a chance to read that report. Yeah, basically, Could you please? basically the, um, the second driveway coming off onto Capitol Bay um, concerned me a little bit because of the proximity to the intersection at Capitol Bay and Bulker. Um, and we haven't gone into the um, the same level of detail as has the, uh, the people who generated the report, but the other the other thing that sort of jumped out at me initially was losing the exit on Cranmore, but I understand that there's a, I mean from a purely traffic flow point of view, it's always beneficial if you can drive in and out of a complex rather than having to congest the exit um, on the one side of the development, but uh, as I say, I initially thought that having the exit on Cranmore allowed the traffic to flow better, but that's just um, just my point of view on it. Okay. So was that the, no. the three points? No. no. Okay, so I missed the, it then. The, the point I'm making is that the traffic study only looks at a period of time in a day. Yes. Right? We're, whereas right now, we all know the lodge is not at capacity, so we're counting cars that are diminished uh, as opposed to regular, yeah. fully staffed, fully uh, filled facility. It did not take into consideration the, uh, the impact of emergency vehicles, which unless you live and are there late at night or in the mornings when they're called out, you would really, it's not something, something I would consider if I was building a, a care facility is why are, why are they not providing us with numbers for emergency um, transportation of residents? It's a significant amount of traffic. Okay. I, I, in, in off hours. And, they're not, and the other thing is, is that they're talking about <clears throat> what do we do when people are on holidays and it's Easter or Christmas and we've got visitation there and staff on site. You know, this isn't about just parking. It's about the increase of traffic that will come to this small part of the community. And, you know, I've lived on that hill since 1980 when it was a country lane with one sidewalk. And now we have, now when you take off that egress off of Cranmore, the traffic is going to come out onto Cabra Bay because it's much safer to turn right. They're going to turn right on to, to Cranmore and right on to Hampshire. And as you know, Mayor, Hampshire Road was not designed to take that level of traffic. We, I saw a semi-trailer pull up, up up that hill the other day. You got parking on both sides of the street. It's the impact to the community that not only the lack of parking, but the additional traffic and how you're changing the traffic flow. Those are the things that I would be hope that that staff would be recommending before we make this decision, not after. Okay. Thanks, Mark. <coughs> okay, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, members of council. Uh, what I'd really like to talk about is uh, what it feels like when Walmart comes to town. <laughs> but I won't. I'm just going to uh, uh, confine my remarks to, uh, to one real question, I guess, or a, a couple of remarks on one question. This, this is being uh, driven, of course, by the number of beds, 320. And the 320 is seen as a zero-sum game be between uh, this site and the Mount View site. My question to the developers is, um, what's, what's happening with the equivalent capacity of the Mount Edwards Court site? And why couldn't uh, 100 beds or 80 beds or even 60 beds uh, be redeveloped on that site? Why is Oak Bay Lodge being asked to take all of that capacity? Thank you. Okay. I'll, I'll wait till the end. Um, and. I'll try and get uh, the applicant to address your question, Mr. Munner. Good evening, ma'am. Jane Van Sickle, 2337 Cadbury Bay Road. 
<clears throat> As you know, I've been trying to uh, get traffic slowed down on a very intersection for over 10 years. Like, you know me very well. I've been here so many times. And I must say, putting the entrance and the exit onto Cadbury Bay Road, that's really, that's going to increase the traffic so much. And as you know, I am on the east side of Cadbury Bay Road. When I try to turn south so I can go downtown, I am caught in my driveway now for up to 10 minutes at a time. It's really frustrating. Sometimes I have to turn right and then go around the block, go around Dalhousie, so that I can get back onto Cadbury Bay and continue downtown. I cannot imagine how bad the traffic is going to be with this. Also, every time I'm out in my yard, I am going to be looking at this billboard. It's not a billboard. It's, it's, uh, it's like the Uptown Mall. I cannot believe that you're thinking this fits into the character of Oak Bay. It absolutely does not. And I, I'm just horrified at the thought of this. But ha having said that, I'm not against there being a home for the elderly, not at all. I'm, I'm for it, as I mentioned to you last time I spoke to you. I had no idea it was going to be like this, though. No idea. I'm a very visual person, and looking onto these billboards, it's just, it's horrifying. It's, it's destroying that area. Thanks for Okay, anyone else like to address council? I'm uh, just going to, uh, okay, ask the, the applicant. Um, I want to, uh, you know, one of the things that's come out of this discussion and deliberation has been the movement of the building towards Cabra Bay Road. And you may recall two meetings ago I said, I'm not sure this is necessarily, I mean, it, it's, helping, it's helping the neighborhood on, on Hampshire Road move the building. I'm not sure what it's going to do taking those trees out and moving it closer for the community at large. I know you recall me saying that. I, I want to repeat that question because that's some of what's just come up. The other question that I'd like you to address is that question on Mount Edwards. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so on the first point, um, and, and I'll add that um, I, I sense the frustration of, of lack of visualization, but um, the original application contained technical drawings which included site sections and streetscape elevations. And a lot of our focus in these meetings has been to try to do it in a photographic or a graphic way. Um, I actually have a, an updated SketchUp model where we've modeled in the old building in red, in a, so you can compare the two. You know, that's, I haven't even shown that tonight. Um, I understand that, but with respect to the actual application, I just want to be clear that we did submit a technical application to staff back in May. We've updated that with all of the changes. And that does include um, the, the streetscape elevations and site sections that show it in its proper relationship to context and to the existing building. Um, when it comes to the impact of moving the building, uh, yes, uh, shutting off Cranmore, moving the building towards Cranmore Bay had some benefits to the residents directly to the east, for sure. Uh, but it does, it does create greater impact on Cadbury Bay Road. Um, when we looked at all of the trade-offs that happen in trying to find a balanced approach to the site, which is looking at um, the trade-offs between setbacks and building height and topography and grading and access and circulation and sight lines and view corridors and mature landscaping and screening and buffering and open space use, we look at, at all of those elements and we try to find the happy marriage where as many of those uh, competing demands often are being met. And our original proposal, uh, we worked with the comments that we received and we did shift the building and we recognized that we had uh, some impact on Cadbury Bay Road. And I think it was uh, comments on the floor at one of those meetings that said if, the, if it was between people and trees, let's move the building and, and um, increase the setbacks. So I think two things. Number one, I think we've demonstrated um, regardless of how frustrating the process itself might have seemed or that it is not truly consultative in the sense that we came with a blank site and a blank script and that we had true flexibility from the outset of the design process,
Clearly we did not. Uh, the parameters of the project were set in the context of the RFP. So unfortunately, our engagement with the neighborhood came at a time where those were given to the project. They were established project parameters. So our challenge and our only ability to, to arrive at some understanding or consensus of the best solution for the site was to listen to the comments, to find that center of gravity where we were meeting as many of those competing demands as possible. Not everyone is going to win, not everyone um, is going to lose, but we're looking for the best solution to the site. And we believe that through the consultation process, um, however limited it's been in our, both our ability to make serious or significant impact changes to the scale of the project, that we have demonstrated a commitment to work with the neighborhood to, to do the best we can through the design process of mitigating the impact. We reiterate our commitment to continue to do that as we develop the design uh, in a more detailed fashion moving forward. So yes, there is impact, um, and we will continue to work on that. I think there's a lot that can be done through the landscaping along that street edge, reinstating um, landscape edge along the street. We can look at, um, at, at doing that through the design process. Your second question with respect to Mount Edwards Court, I'll take a stab at it. Um, it is a heritage building. Uh, it is, does not meet the code re requirements to exceed two floors of care. And there is an unused portion of the building, but it, it, it is non-compliant as a combustible building for care as a use. So there is no capacity for that building, uh, and even in its existing state, there are many aspects of the building do not even meet the current care guidelines. So it does not present a viable option for adding additional beds. Is there anything more that you would say to that? Um, I would just add, they also, it was also mentioned in terms of what about Central Care Home. Central Care Home is, a, is currently a five-story concrete construction building. Um, and unfortunately, when you look at the design of the neighborhood, design of the 20 and the, the footprint that we're talking about, the land size and shape does not allow for it to go on there. And secondly, the issue was in terms of looking at either site in terms of that, the, the aspect of demolition cost and then to, to try to fit something on, even though it can't, also became prohibitive in terms of it was not economically feasible in terms of that, is in terms of putting an RFP forward. So in other words, to put an RFP forward, that would have been staged such that it had a certain number say in Obey, but a lesser number trying to fit them onto these sites or any other site was not an option because of these variables. I would like to just uh, uh, indicate in terms of, uh, John mentioned uh, that uh, I made a mistake in terms of the parking, just that to was, clarify yeah, that. That was John Rankin. Right? John Rankin. Yeah. So just to clarify that, uh, we touched on the, the parking and traffic study on the Tuesday night. We did not present the whole study. We indicated that it was important that it go to staff first in terms of the full study, and that as soon as it went to staff, then we would make it available to the neighbors. So it was submitted to, to staff on Thursday, and it was made available to the neighbors Thursday evening. So that is, that is the correct information of it. And so, that, is, that, is, that is a normal process as well. Yeah, and, we, and I, we wanted to be respectful in terms of the process, in terms of how the information should flow. So the last comment I would make is, is just back to where I started this evening without reiterating all the points, in terms of that we think there are a number of community benefits that we have highlighted for council to consider in terms of this project, and we do think there are substantial, and we think that that should be taken into consideration when looking at the, the entirety of the, the proposal in terms of the, neighbor of the neighborhood of Oak Bay. Okay, thanks very much. Could you just ask a question on that, Your was, a, was, a, was a gentleman standing behind you, and I had actually cut off, I'd asked if anyone else wanted to speak. I was trying to wrap it up. I'm gonna ask you, Mr. Johnson, because. Did you want to speak to council on this? I, I would. Okay, so I'm going to have Mr. Johnson to step aside. I, I, this is unusual, but I will allow you to come forward and introduce yourself. This, this is unusual too. Well, no, no, I, but I, I did ask right. if anyone yeah, wanted. I would like to have an opportunity. To please go ahead. So I'm Doug Mollard, uh, 2361 Cranmore. Uh, that is kind of a nice uh, slide to leave up there, realizing that the red doesn't really represent the building. 
the thought of the atrium being placed on a fifth the size of uh, Windsor Park sort of captures it. But my question is, there seem to be a lot of bookends that are inflexible and not time to discuss. So it, it seems like wherever you turn, things have already been set up and they can't be moved. And one of the inflexibles that keeps coming up is the neighborhoods. And I think we're, uh, everyone here is very much in support of a care facility. We know the people here are very good at providing care. Uh, we know our neighborhood needs a care facility. We want to support the greater uh, community. And no one's against any of these things. It's trying to get the right shape, the right size, the right form, and having some dialogue. And one of the bookends that comes up is the 320, and where did that come from? But another bookend that keeps coming up is the neighborhoods. And I, I'm a huge proponent of neighborhoods, and I applaud Patrick and uh, Baptist Housing for having them. Uh, that quality of uh, care, the sense of the, the uh, staff working continually over a period of time with the uh, residents, not feds, but the residents. And the question I have on that bookend, though, is where did 20 come up? Yeah, where did, where did the concept of 20 come up? I keep hearing evidence-based research, so uh, when I hear that in an academic context, usually what I say is, is okay, where's the author and uh, what's the year? Let's, let's look at that evidence-based research. Uh, could it be that maybe 16 would be better? Is it really 20? What about 16? If we look at 16, what could we do to a design configuration within that lot? How could we uh, refigure it? So uh, what, where, where does 20 come in? We're talking about evidence-based research. I'd like to see the research. I think council should see the research. Uh, what about 24? And uh, these things were proposed at the uh, consultation meeting and really, again, uh, ran into bookends and, and no flexibility of discussion. So, uh, you know, you take 60, uh, units off, uh, residents off the top floor, how can you reconfigure a building with that, looking at different ways of structuring it? Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mr. Mono. So, um, could, you, could you incorporate um, an answer to that into, into your closing comments? Sure. In terms of the neighborhood, there's, there's a tremendous amount of research that's been written about neighborhoods and neighborhood size and for seniors with complex care needs as well as dementia needs. And so those studies are, are there uh, and out there. And uh, we, we actually, as an organization, have, and also Patrick's uh, firm, have both uh, had people go through courses on evidence-based design. And so they are actually both certified in respect to that, and that is a program that's provided through the, the hospital uh, side of things in the States. I'm not sure the exact name of the organization. Yes, thank you, Howard. And that, that was also the, the process that was used in terms of the Royal Jubilee. Is there so, an author and a date? I, I don't have an author and date here with me tonight in respect to that. I think that's okay. not but, realistic. But, I, I, but that's what it's based on in respect to how we came up with the 20 and looking at that. The second piece is looking at the economics, which I've mentioned before, in terms of looking at the staffing ratios and working backwards in terms of putting the best proposal as well forward was also taken into consideration in terms of those numbers and how that worked. So there was a combination of things in terms of the evidence-based design, in terms of not making it too large and having it in neighborhood size. Uh, yes, you'll find re projects that will say, 10 is a nice number too. Um, so there will be evidence that, that says that that might be better in a cottage situation where you have a one-story building. But we're, we're not, you gotta be able to sift through and compare comparable information that's relevant in respect to it. Um, I think that's all I would say in terms of that. Uh, in terms of the slide, I, just to be clear, this slide was not intended, and, and I appreciate that it was clarified by the neighbor this was trying to show you where it would be in the context if you were looking at the view. The other slides that were taken with the red lines, which were taken from the backyards of the neighborhood, those reflect the two-story attitude. Those were correct. They were, not, they were not measured in terms of that Patrick took uh, uh, a scale out and measured it. 
he took approximation in terms of what a story would be and drew the line in terms of the two story line above it. So those ones are correct, just to be clear that it, not all slides were just randomly put together with lines uh, associated with it. This one was trying to show the impact in terms of if you were coming down the street, what the, that face would look like. Okay. Two more questions. Can I just ask, Mr. Johnson, because I, I know you do respect evidence-based research, so I'm just wondering how you and your mind put this together, that we currently have a campus of care there at Oak Bay Lodge, correct? It is a campus of care. It is. Um, it all depends how you define campus of care. Um, campus, it does not have a complete campus of care, okay. as it currently sits at the present time. A complete campus of care would have independent living, and it might have, and that would be people that are seniors that have no requirements whatsoever. Then it would be independent living with supportive services where there are seniors that need some support, which might be meals, it might be housekeeping, it might be laundry. The next level would be assisted living, which means that they have now a complexity from a healthcare perspective and need assistance with some healthcare. Then the next one would be uh, actually, as we're proposing in this project, licensed uh, dementia housing which would be very specific in terms of the needs of early entry people into suffering from dementia. And then the final one would be the residential care, which is also today known as complex care. That would be a comprehensive aging in place uh, facility if it had all of those components. So, but Oak Bay has independent assisted and residential? No, as I understand, they only have independent living with supportive services and they have complex care. Okay. Only two pieces. They do not have assisted living. And yes, and they do the adult day services, uh, which is though not considered part of a campus or an aging in place because that is a community service. So, so it's got two. It will have a licensed dementia housing and it, for dementia and it will have the complex care. But not the assisted. Correct, right. so and if you were to ask my residence at at uh, Oak Bay, or excuse me, at Marion Village and at, uh, at Shannon Oaks, they see that that distance and proximity is not a barrier in terms of being involved, both socially within terms of events occurring at either place or being involved. And so, so there is those that say a campus and a community must be all in one location. There are others though that would pr propose that it can be met within a proximity of distance, and that's how we've approached it, because we have that opportunity within Oak Bay to be able to, to connect and do services across and, for, and support. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Councilor Jensen, I'll give you a last question, um, and then we'll move on. Well, I'm sure there's, there's kind of lots of other questions that have spoken up there. State of the art care environment you, uh, you spoke about as one of the advantages. How do you see the campus of care fitting into state of the art, though? Because <coughs> it's missing the campus of care. So, but what did you mean by state of the art? Sure. Well, state of the art, which is evidence based, is, for example, in, in within the neighborhoods, it's using uh, products and textures to be able to support and encourage and sustain independence and to encourage the residents. So research, for example, has shown that rather than coming to the end of a cor uh, coming to a uh, an end of a corner, I'll give a corridor. I'll give that example. If you can create where, in essence, it's a circulation loop, that creates an opportunity for the resident to follow <coughs> that. That can be done by flooring and ceiling, as well as the treatment of the walls in terms of how that's done. So that's state of the art evidence in terms of how to create a more healthy environment for wandering residents. The yeah, same is true. It just, no, it's just that I'm trying to get you to focus on campus of care in the sense that I take it that's also state of the art, though. That the mm -hmm. campus of care is a recommended approach, is it, or maybe not? Um, I, I'm not sure I would say it is. I don't think they've. I, I haven't seen uh, research that says okay. state of the art is Fair campus enough. of care. I, I think I there's think certainly the there is the there is a preference towards that yeah. where it can be accommodated. And, sure. um, and just this is a, a little side. It's more a philosophy. Yes, a little sidebar that it, it, would, it might help if uh, you were to uh, provide.
provide some of these studies and evidence-based studies. Just, uh, I know the, uh, the neighbors are all uh, very keen to kind of do their own research, and, and I'm sure they'll be able to dig some of these up if they have yeah. the right parameters. Um, and um, something else. Yeah, I'll read my own notes. Though. That's the problem. Uh, I'll come back to the other one. Some of, oh, um, it, yes. In terms of uh, that's right here. Uh, Dr. Linda Reed wrote us a letter. Can you comment on that? Just, just so the audience knows, the uh, the comment in the letter from Dr. Reed was. Well, I'm wondering if, we, if, if Mr. Johnson has had a chance to read it and can, can comment on it. Uh, I read it briefly. Um, I can't comment, and Howard may wish to, Howard Wagner may wish to comment as well. This is talking about the process of how to enter the healthcare system, Correct. and that this this system is province wide in terms of how you enter when you are uh, assessed <coughs> as needing complex care uh, requirements then in essence you can put your name on a wait list to uh, first and second choice in terms of where you would like to be. The desire is to, is to keep residents within their communities where possible and there is the ability to move if you are not able to find your first choice in terms of what you would like to do. So there is, there is a process in terms of if the first requirement comes and it's outside your community that in essence you will have to make a choice in terms of whether you go to that and then also then apply to be able to transfer. Uh, and however, if uh, you, you don't choose that, I, I do believe that um, they do change the order in terms of uh, because you've denied, you, you've indicated you, you turned down the, the, the choices that you were offered. Would that be correct? And Howard, would you like to answer? It's sure. just that I guess it's difficult coming at the last minute because we just received it ourselves, right? Um, and uh, she talks about uh, imploring uh, us to do everything in our power to ensure the Oak Bay Lodge campus of care model is preserved. But um, to some extent, it's maybe unfair to ask you to comment on it because we just got it the last minute, and uh, I understand that. So this is a letter written by, I believe, a family physician. Um, we have uh, operated the first available bed placement policy, as Howard has alluded to. Uh, it's run throughout the province. The, the sad fact is that we have many, many seniors who are seeking access to residential care beds and facilities, and we don't have spare beds in the facilities available. So tonight, we would probably have, I'm guessing, but probably five or six people within our emergency department who require admission to an acute bed for some uh, physical need. And we'll have patients in our acute bed facilities across the island who whose acute level of care will be complete and they're ready for a move to an alternative level of care. And we call them ALC patients, meaning that their acute episode of care is complete and they need to move into uh, another place. Now, as we sit here today, we have approximately 10 to 14% of our acute beds uh, filled with patients who need some form of other care in the community or rehabilitation, but they're ready to move from acute care. And uh, Sadly, we need those acute beds, so we do ask the patients and their families to work with us to move to the first available residential care bed that's, that's there. And then we work with families to, to make sure that they ultimately end up in a bed closer to the neighbourhood. That's our wish, that's our plan, and we're revising our, our whole procedure, in fact, at the moment to make sure that we are as responsive as we can be to make sure that, that first available bed and secondary choices are available to residents. And the more beds that we have, the more able that we would be to, to accede to those requests. Okay. Yes, that's last question. Last question. Well, I mean, I do appreciate the more beds that you have, the more you may be able to be responsive to, to those things. But I, I think also what Dr. Reed is pointing okay. out, that with the loss of Oak Bay Lodge as it currently exists, though it's not a complete campus of care, it does have assisted care to uh, residential care, which a lot, it gives more opportunity for continuity no. of care as it currently exists? No, we only have complex care. There's no, no admissions to Oak Bay Lodge other than patients who require complex care. The independent living <coughs> component requires no care requirements whatsoever, and we do not admit clinical oh, patients oh, to that facility. Sorry.
Yeah, okay, that's what I actually, actually meant. But I think also, if I may just say that um, Dr. Reed is, prob is, con is concerned that with the um, residential care facility that's proposed here for the Oak Bay Lodge property, that it contributes to more fragmentation of care. That it's, I mean, her point here is that seniors living at um, Shannon Oaks or Marion Village really are not guaranteed a bed to, to the new facility necessarily. That, that's a concern. Yeah, uh, I can speak to that because that comes back to the policy. Uh, even where there is a campus of care model, there is no provincial policy that, that guarantees somebody who is in independent living in the same building where there's complex care, that they'll be guaranteed to be able to move into that complex care in that building. That is not a guarantee that the Ministry of Health has been prepared to, to, to uh, give to, to residents and to uh, of a, a, a campus of care. That has been something that providers have been asking for. And uh, we do know that health authorities try to accommodate but it is not a requirement. So, so that's absolutely right. We would have to have empty beds lying available in each facility to, to make that a reality. But I do agree that in an ideal world, if you were living in um, in Marion Gardens or another facility in independent or living, and then your complex your needs became more complex and you required a residential care bed, our aim on to go forward is to be as responsive as we can to patients need to live within the area. Now we guarantee that these patients will be accommodated in South Island. Um, but you know, if you lived in Campbell River, we were sitting in Campbell River. I remember one of my first days in the health authority and I heard a number of families in Campbell River tell me that they were having to visit their parents in Comox or Nanaimo because we didn't have an adequate number of residential care beds in Campbell River. We have increased that number significantly but we still have more beds per thousand population for over 75 in South Island than anywhere else in the island. Okay, could um, Mr. Johnson, could you flip the switch, two switches on behind you, please? Okay, so I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna presume that's, we've exhausted the questions here. Um, I've allowed a lot of latitude in the questions um, because the, uh, the question that the council has to deliberate now is um, whether there's enough merit in the proposal to take it in two weeks' time or three weeks' time, because I think it would come back on November the 14th. Uh, if there's enough merit in this proposal that's being presented to, to uh, send out notification to the neighborhood on what is a height variance, a parking variance, uh, a height variance, an occupiable height variance, a parking variance, and a setback variance. Can I, can I just, uh, perhaps we need to just uh, recast that question, mm -hmm. because I think that is one part of the question, is Correct. the merit. But I think for me, another very important aspect of that question is, do we have enough information before us that we can really move to the next stage? Have we been given all the facts and my feeling is without speaking to the mayors uh, because obviously a, uh, a, a seniors residence in Oak Bay has merit just in and of itself that it needs to be considered but I, I don't think we have all the facts and I don't think that we really have a sense of what impact this will have on the neighbors We've got a bit of an idea through those uh, computer animations. I thought we were going to get some photos here that give us a real impression about the overlaying of what the building looks like, but we just got those little red lines, and some of them, uh, and, and I'm sure it wasn't intended. So, so Councillor, you, you would have to argue against advancing this uh, to November the 14th. Until we have more information. And that's, that's, we have asked that's, time and again for a model. There's no model. I've asked time and again for these photos. These photos aren't, I mean, they were somewhat helpful, uh, but really, they, uh, I don't think they tell the whole story. There was a suggestion earlier, I think, by uh, Councillor Braithwaite that we have some balloons on the corner so we can get a sense. That hasn't been done. In fact, this is the first time that neighbors have seen those photos. It's the first time I've seen those photos. How can we react to them? How can they react to them? 
I mean, I think, uh, Mr. Mayor, what we really need, and we should have maybe got right at the outset, is someone in our corner, so to speak, a planner or a consultant or a consulting architect to assist us with these issues and to frame the questions and to ensure we have uh, the, the full set of information. I mean, you think this is an $80 million project and there's no model? That, that's got to be some concern. This is, a, this is the biggest project, I think, that's come before council. I, mean, I can't remember what was the, the hotel, was 50, 60 million? Uh, something in that. This is a, a massive project. And, and not to have either photos or models to get a sense of what the impact visually is, I, I don't think it allows us to move to the next stage. Okay. What will it really look like? I, uh, Mr. Rankin talked about being bushwhacked. To some extent, I can understand with those photos. This is the first time they've seen them. How can they properly respond to it? And it's, that's a matter of due process, Mr. Mayor, that we've given the, the, the neighbors a, a fair chance to react to this information. And I don't think they've had that fair chance. Uh, so, uh, I, I don't see we're ready to go to the next stage yet. That, that would be my position. Okay, Councillor. Councillor <laughs> So, this must be the time of year for difficult decisions. I, I, at the end of the week, I have to go to the fire hall and Council has to pick the winning costume of all the dear little children who have dressed up for Halloween and who all should win and we have to say, you won and all the rest lost. I always thought that was the worst decision we had to make. But this is a very difficult decision, there's no question about it. We're dealing really with two things, we're dealing with parking and height. Our parking bylaw, I've been here quite a number of years, I've never yet seen any situation that came forward where our parking bylaw was complied with. It's, it's more adhered to by variances than by accuracy, so I don't put too much weight in what it says. I'm pleased to see that most of the other care facilities in the neighborhood have, have one for three beds, which is what is being proposed here. I can't really believe that the addition of 40, uh, 40 beds, 40 dementia beds is going to change either the traffic or the, or the parking significantly. You can bring the same food for another 40 people in the same truck and I, I don't see that being an issue and I think the parking report is quite positive. I, don't dis I do not disagree that we have traffic problems on Hampshire, and we have had tra traffic problems on Hampshire for probably a year or two. Nothing to do with this issue. We have traffic problems on Hampshire, and I think we need to address that. We had somebody at council a week or two ago saying, why are semi-trailers going down Hampshire in the middle of the night? And I don't know the answer to that. But that, to me, is a bit of a separate issue. We. Uh, I recognize we have 25 people that are upset. The height is going to be 17.8 feet higher. I disagree with Councillor Jensen that they don't have a vision of what it's going to look like. It's going to like a big building, much bigger than it is now. And uh, yes, it's going to stick out. The good news is that there are some people that are looking at a wall on the, on the south end, and the wall is going to disappear and be moved back, and they're going to look at a D in a couple of places. And at the front, it, we're probably going to annoy some of the people across the street who, when I went to talk to them, said, I can't even see the building for the trees, and now we're going to cut down some of those trees. So I understand that uh, we're moving it around, but I think the residents have a pretty clear idea. It's a bigger building. There's no question about it. I don't pretend to be a health expert, and I'm not pretending to tell Biha or anybody else that you should change what you're doing or do something else. They, they, they manage that aspect. A number of years ago, I, I chaired the senior housing committee in this room. And this gentleman kept appearing in the back row, and I didn't know who he was. And I finally went down and said, uh, excuse me, sir, who are you? And he said, I'm Howard Johnson. And I thought, my god, he's going to build a hotel. <laughs> but since then, uh, Howard Johnson has worked with this council and developed the B Street uh, facility, and basically what I can say about Howard Johnson is he's done what he said he was going to do all the way along. 
And I think when Howard Johnson says, and when his staff say, we will work with the community and we'll put in some landscaping, I believe that he will. I also sat here through Carlton House, and I had a much bigger audience than this, but the whole world was going to be ru ruined by Carlton House. And I regularly either drive by or park out the back of Carlton House, and with the landscaping and with, it, and with the view of it, it, it disappears into the trees. And I have a fair degree of confidence that, not immediately, but over some time, this building will fit into the community. Not everybody will be happy with it, but it is a very important asset for Oak Bay. During that same period of time, we worked hard to get Carlton House. We've got Carlton House and B Street. We have two or three hundred people sitting, growing older by the moment. At one of these moments, they're going to need this level of care. And I think to have it in Oak Bay is very, very critical. I think the changes that have been made are good. I think they have been, they've worked hard, they've moved it back, they've moved it down. It's still high, it's still a big building, but they've done their best. <coughs> I think this asset for Oak Bay, I really don't want to see us lose it. Maybe, maybe all these deadlines are right, maybe they're wrong, but I'm not really prepared to pay, play poker with them. I think it's important that we have this facility. This is one of those situations where we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't. But I'm prepared to move it along. Okay. Uh, Councilman? Well, um, I, you know, I, I, I just want to compliment you. I, I mean, I, I get the, the hard work that's been put into this. There's smart minds at the table. There's Good intent. I, Mr. Johnson, you've done terrific work in our community, and I applaud you for that. But um, I, I just, I don't feel we, I, for myself, I don't have enough information here either. I, I'm not totally convinced about the traffic study personally. I, I I'm concerned with the way the traffic um, merges in and out of an already complicated um, street, and uh, with the increased traffic flow. I, I, I'd like to see an independent say from our community, in spite of what I've, I've heard here this evening. I'm concerned about the massing. I, 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 I have, I'm looking at the photos and I'm having a difficult time um, uh, uh, visualizing what this will look like, except that it will be massive when I think of the size of the atrium. Um, and I'm not clear why we haven't yet had a model. I, told, I was told there wasn't enough time, but that was uh, almost two months ago, and I, I just can't imagine that we couldn't have had a physical model before us. And and I also I'm not qualified to comment on the on the um, uh, urban and architectural design here, and I I would like to see some kind of uh, independent, objective opinion on behalf of Oak Bay to address. Uh, those issues. So I, I don't feel personally that I've done my due diligence here at this table. I don't have enough information. But the second point is, I've already brought up earlier, and it has to do with the consultation process here. And I, I've heard why the decisions have been made at, at, at the level they have, and why it's taken quite a while for it to come our way. When I saw this, it was in August, and we really had a chance to look at this, was in September, and then all of a sudden, everything's going very fast, and we're told about uh, this timeline. And, uh, you know, our neighbors have had, the neighbors of this, around this area, have had a chance to scrutinize this carefully. But I, I've talked to a lot of people over the last number of weeks in Oak Bay, and most people in Oak Bay aren't aware of what's uh, going on here. And I, I'm not, I have not, from what I've heard tonight, um, found it compelling that we haven't fully exhausted other spaces in this community um, where this kind of facility could, could work better. I mean, we've got a letter here from some community people who have suggested the area up at the rec center, which is part of the community plan, and it's not zoned, but um, is consistent with um, institutional care where a seniors housing complex could be provided, and that would truly provide 
a campus of care, provide that continuity of care, which we, we all know is a better way to provide uh, uh, care for, for seniors who need to transition from one level of care to another. And I, I, I'm just not convinced that we have fully e exhausted uh, that as a possibility and consider flipping the location of the Oak Bay Lodge project over to that place that's near Shannon Oaks and uh, Marion Garden to fulfill, you know, the true criteria of uh, a campus of care. So I think that we need to, the other, the other thing I just wanted to say that, and I've said this earlier, is I would like to see this project stay in this community. I, it's a good project, and um, uh, but it benefits the region. It, it does benefit Oak Bay, but it really benefits the region. I understand the need for those residential beds. We've waited a long time for uh, decisions like this to come forward, and um, you people have, have managed to pull all the chips together and, and, and make this happen. So. And, and, and that's applaudable, but but I'm not convinced we've got the right place for this project. And if it is in this place, I don't have enough information. Okay. Well, I it, again, this is a very difficult decision, and I think Councillor Herbert's right. We're down to for doing. We're down to for don'ts, but we we need to take. Um, sorts of things into consideration. Um, first, the, com the community, the, the, the members, um, the residential members that live around Oak Bay Lodge, you know, they have some very valid concerns as far as height go and massing go. Um, and I'm sad to see that um, we haven't been able to come to a, a better um, agreement as far as, as the height, etc. go. I thought, I thought that um, Baptist Housing did a, a great job of trying to move that building away from the residents. Um, I thought that they took a lot of things into account as far as the Cranmore entrance and the, um, the Cabra Bay, doubling up on the Cabra Bay entrance to make it an entrance exit. Um, and I think that the, I, I believe that the residents appreciated that, that effort that was put into that. Um, I, I, I don't know whether either side will ever be happy with what's going to happen. Um, it could be that we could take a level off the building and that would help the residents. But then we lose 60 or 120 beds, whatever it happens to be, so then it doesn't fit in with what we need in the region. Again, damned if we do and damned if we don't. Um, I. I, I, I do not want to see these beds lost. Um, I really think that um, it's, it, it is a benefit to the region. You talked about it, that this would be a benefit to the region. Absolutely, it would be a benefit to the region. And really, when I look at other municipalities, they take on things that are a benefit to the region. And that's part of what being part of Greater Victoria is. We all need to take our share of what is going to be a benefit to the region. And so taking all of that in mind and, and understanding the promise from Baptist Housing that there would be a continued <coughs> level of engagement with the neighbors. Um, and as Councillor Herbert pointed out, there's always been a very good relationship between um, Howard Johnson and Baptist Housing and our neighborhood. Um, and understanding that um, there's, uh, we're retaining the adults daycare, because I think that's very important to some people, um, then I am actually going to support this. Okay, so um, um, I, I need a motion before, and I, I, will, I will be speaking in support of moving it to um, a request for a development's variance permit, which would come up at November the 14th. I make that motion. Second. But I think, I think there needs to be a little more detail in a motion such as that, quite frankly. Because we're, we're talking variances here, and they have to be specific variances. So we, we, ha we had a motion at the last meeting, which we didn't continue with, um, because we wanted to get some more information. Do you have that, uh, Ms. Hill? 
Um, I do have a, a motion that would cover off all the variances uh, to be in line with our usual process if council wants to move it forward to the public notifications. Okay. So do you, do you have to read that out? It's probably... I, I yes, because it's a very specifically worded resolution that will be tabled, and that's the information that we'll use to send out to the neighbours. Okay. So so it's it's exactly what is in the proposal. Yes. Okay. Could you could you read on? It's long. Um, that the director of building and planning be authorized to issue a development variance permit with respect to 2251 Cadbury Road, Lot One, Sections 28 and 61, Victoria District, Plan 23992, which would vary the provisions of Bylaw Number 3531 the Zoning Bylaw 1986 and Bylaw Number 3540, the Parking Facilities Bylaw 1986, as follows. Zoning Bylaw Section 11.2.5, Sub 1A, Minimum Front Lot Line Setback from Cadbury Bay Road, uh, permitted 7 point, or required is 7.62 meters, requested is 4.5 meters, the variance is 3.12 meters. Section 11.2.5 sub 2, maximum building height. Permitted is 10.7 meters, requested is 23.9 meters, and the variance is 13.2 meters. Section 11.2.5 sub 3, maximum occupiable height. Permitted is 4.6 meters, requested is 19.3 meters, the variance is 14.7 meters. Uh, parking facilities bylaw section 4.1 and schedule A, A.7, minimum number of parking spaces, required 320, requested 107, variance 213, to accommodate the construction of a new six story plus basement care facility, as shown in the plans appended <coughs> to committee the whole agenda item number 2011 313, being a memorandum from the Director of Building and Planning dated October 7, 2011. I move second. what she just said. Second. Okay, so it's, it's been moved and seconded, and everyone's had a chance to speak to that, those particular. Uh, anyone else like to speak? It's okay. not so much a uh, speaker. I've already uh, set up my position. It's a really a question for staff. Uh, again, I think there's a deficiency in the information. Is it possible that we have a consulting budget that we could hire? an architect actually to put these photographs through. I've seen them before at this table. They're excellent in terms of visualizing what the impact is going to be. You know, we've asked for them and asked for them, and what we got are red dotted lines, which I don't think is what we really had in mind. So, do we have the money? And I'm sure we could find an architect, because we can just go back to those people. And uh, we did it at that time, and they seemed to turn it around fairly quickly. I guess the short answer is no, we don't have the money. Um, the only thing I can come to mind is there was some consulting money earmarked for the beginning of the OCP process. Um, but if you use that, then we don't do anything this year. I thought, there was, some, that's what was I thought there was some general consulting money that we had in the budget. To, to well, there, there is for administration, and I'm not sure how much is left. If, in uh, if I remember rightly, um, and I this, I, I think there was, Ms. Walker, uh, a budget in there on the planning, uh, which does have some money in it. I missed the last uh, financial report, but the one before has some money in it. Go ahead, Mr. Council. Well, I'm sorry, I'm confused what we're asking. We, we, we have a gentleman here who has put pictures together. He's done them under a fairly tight time frame. Could we not just be a little more specific and say this is what we want to see? And I, I think we've been fairly specific right off the bat. I mean, well, I, you know, I, I thought we made it very clear what uh, kind of things we're looking for. I mean, we even we've well, asked for the model. We've asked for well, all the things. Not, not, the, the yeah. model is a different issue, but yeah. if you're talking about the pictures, yeah. I mean, if we were specific to, uh, to the hard set people here, are there any difficulty producing that? We actually have a lot of that information available, but we understood tonight that we didn't want to err on the side of, of bringing all of that to bear. We thought tonight's decision was to refer us to no, for notification. We are prepared to bring additional information if council so wishes. Could we, could we be specific in what we want to gain? Even if we've done it before, <coughs> could we 
tell them exactly it's, what we it's, want. It's overlays of what the building will look like to scale from a variety of positions on the backs of these uh, houses. And they're the view corridors. Uh, you know, I, I think it's... I, I can see Mr. Cotter nodding, so he, he's got... We also need them in advance. I mean, there's no use bringing them okay. on at the last minute. Could you, could you explain? Uh, you know, maybe the neighbors need to look at them a week ahead of time or so, so they can respond, and they may want to take them to some consultants that they know, or friends or neighbors that have skills in that area. It's really just a computing thing where you, you put it to scale. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I think we don't have to ask our staff to hire anyone. It seems Mr. Collins has got all these. Okay, so... Well, it should be, uh, you know, this, this speaks to the this issue that some of the, uh, the members of the public talked about is, uh, is there, shouldn't there be kind of a, and I'm not casting any aspersions, a kind of an independent review uh, from uh, from our point of view. I mean, all we've had, for instance, on the on the parking is one comment from Mr. Thomason and one very short comment from Mr. Marshall. Is that kind of analysis we need from our side, from parking and massing and, and impact? It's just, it's just not there. I don't see it there. Well, I mean, each individual member of council has to make their own decision as to what they want. I mean, quite frankly, on the parking, um, I don't have an issue with the parking report. Actually, I don't have an issue with the traffic report. So, you know, other members of council may want in-depth analysis of that, um, but I think you can ask the applicant uh, at the next meeting, it's quite frankly. I, I mean, I think that uh, what we have to do here is, is we, we, we have to make a decision on this. Because um, you know you can you you can say that it's poker, you can say people are bluffing, you can say all kinds of things, but it, it, it strikes me that I, I am not going to take a risk on that. I'm not going to I'm not going to take a risk that the delay is going to kill the project. Um, I I'm, I'm not prepared to take that kind of risk for the community in which we live. So our job, my job, is is to look to the greater community and to, to make sure that the greater community's interests are served. So I have to ask myself, is there enough community benefit in this project? And I was somewhat surprised tonight that there was a list of community benefits because I've been thinking the last week, what are all the community benefits? Uh, and most of them were actually covered, covered on that list. So then I, then I go to the site, and there's been a lot of lot of discussion about, is this the right site? And um, you know, I I probably know the sites in this community as well as anyone, and it is it would be incredibly difficult to find another site in Oak Bay in which you could get uh, a rezoning and be successful. Um, I ask myself, are we are we part of the region? Is it is it is it part of our responsibility as citizens of Victoria uh, to, to have a project such as this, not only for our residents, but for the region as a whole? And I'd have to answer yes to that. When you, when you redevelop, it doesn't matter where you redevelop. Uh, this is one of those unfortunate truisms, is that it always, always tends to be bigger. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you go to UVic, uh, every building that they redevelop is bigger. Whether you go to the hospital, you know, you can look at the hospital 100 years ago, you can look at the hospital 60 years ago, you can look at it 20 years ago, uh, and it's, it's much, much bigger. And I would just on this timing issue, just remind you of the story. Uh, we, had a, we had a project in this, in this region for developing uh, a diagnostic and treatment center and that diagnostic and treatment, treatment center sat on the shelf for 30 years until the right timing came along and we got it. And it's a real benefit to the whole region. And then along came the new wing of the hospital, which it just happened. There was, a, there was a, an opening of time and Viha got that, that project right through the door at the right time, and we now have a most incredible uh, facility in, in just on our borders. 
which is a great benefit to everyone. Um, if you look at our own facilities, when we redeveloped the library, it, was, it went bigger and we had objections from the neighbors. When we redeveloped the rec center, we, had, uh, we, we wanted to redevelop that. We had to give ourselves a parking variance in order to make it work. Uh, and we had objection from people on that. Uh, so, and that's just the public side. When I look at the private side, it happens as well. So, 17.9 feet um, is going to have an impact, no question. But it's not an impact on the whole community. It's an impact on a certain part of the community, and that is is really unfortunate. And I, I, I commend Baptist Housing because of their tried to move the building away. What I think it's done, in my opinion, because my job is to look out for the greater community, I don't think it's as good uh, from the point of view of the people driving down Camper Bay Road or living down Camper Bay Road. I think it's moved a little close, but I recognize that it's helped people who live on the Hampshire, and I'm prepared to live with that compromise. Um, and then you really come down to the operator and, and Baptist housing. And I'll tell you another little story, and I'm not sure if I'm exactly right on this, but I remember two applications coming within a couple of months of each other. One was the Oak Bay Beach Hotel, and one was Marion Gardens and Shannon Oaks. They, they came about the same time. Uh, Shannon Oaks um, went out, they consulted with the neighborhood of Goldsmith, and they listened to them, they moved it back. Council said you need to break up the building. Instead of being a monolith, make it into two buildings. And by the way, we would like to have uh, some extra facilities there. Why don't you put an extra story on it? And they put an extra story on it. And um, that now has been built. It's been operating. People are happily living there. And the OB Beach Hotel is still being built. So uh, sometimes, you know, you, you, can, you can spend so much time making decisions that the opportunity is almost lost. And I, uh, I, I remember when uh, Baptist Housing first came to this community, I went over to Vancouver. Uh, everyone knows I, I, I do my due diligence. I go around and I check on, doesn't matter who they are, I go and see where they operate. And I, I took, that's right, John Herbert came with me. And we went and we toured some of the Baptist facilities over on the lower mainland. And this was seven years ago, six, seven years ago. I was impressed then. They are good to their word. If they say they're going to do something, they do something. Uh, they've built a very good reputation in this community. And I'm prepared to uh, move this forward to November the 14th on the development variance permit. So uh, I'm going to be supporting the motion. So I'm going to call the question. No. Table. You need to table. Oh, I need to table. I always do that. I did at the beginning of the meeting. I move to table. Second. Move to table. Move by Councillor Jensen. Move to table in order to give the notice to the. Uh, table in order to give notice, yeah. Okay. I'm going to call the question then. Can I do that then? Yes. yes. Okay, call the question. Those in favor? Contrary? Motion carries. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will you. Okay. Yeah, the table. Actually, that was unanimous because you didn't raise your hand. Yeah, but tabled. It's tabled to give notice and come back uh, for a decision on November 14th. Okay? Good. Thanks very much indeed.